Time for Mac Break Weekly. Alex Lindsay joins Renee Ritchie and Andy Anaka. We're talking about the latest uh, Apple news. The VR future for Apple. New watch faces. New uh, versions of iOS and uh, OS X betas. And, yes, the hated Error 53. What really is going on? It's all coming up next on Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Hi, everybody. It's time for our annual audience survey. We'd really like to hear from you. It helps us understand our audience better, know what you like and don't like, how you listen to the show. It also helps us tell advertisers what kind of people listen. But I promise you, your feedback is always kept personally anonymous. All you have to do is visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It'll just take a few minutes and it'll help us make Twit even better. We really appreciate your support and any help you can give us, twit.tv slash survey. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 493, recorded Tuesday, February 9th, 2016. Yum time. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by Texture, the mobile app that lets you access the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere, using your phone or tablet. For your free trial, visit texture.com slash MacBreak. And by Casper, an online retailer of premium mattresses for a fraction of the price. Because everyone deserves a great night's sleep. Get $50 off any mattress purchase by visiting casper.com slash MacBreak and entering the promo code MacBreak. And by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send all the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about all the latest Apple news. <clears throat> I got a frog in my throat. I'm not sure why. Mm, Andy Anatko is here no. from the Chicago <laughs> Sun-Times. <laughs> Hello, Andrew. No, Hello, Leo. Now, is that the frog that makes you say bad words, Leo? <clears throat> it might be. Do we, do, do we need to tell that frog that we are <laughs> going to a large audience today and that we're going to use our inside, <laughs> not angry words? Bad little frog. Bad you keep quiet inside Leo's mouth for the next hour and a half. Uh, yes. No. That's uh, The frog is gone now. We've, we've exorcised it. There you go. Also here with us from where? Where are you in Pittsburgh? Where are you in Washington D.C.? Are you I'm actually all the coming coming to you all the way from San Rafael? <laughs> You're home. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I <laughs> my house. No, I, I uh, we have a we're doing a Final Cut user group right you know at two o'clock, and I didn't think I could do the show and then get back here in time to do the Final Cut user group because we used to do it right you know, next to you, right in, yeah. in the in the brick house. And so, uh, so I figured I better just do it. And then I thought I'd have this all set up and um, I ran out of runway. So oh, um, that's good. So we're good. Kind we're of good. Water, kind of a green screen, but we're good. Eventually, it'll, it'll be great next week. You look great. Doesn't matter. Nobody, right. Nobody watches this show anyway. It's audio. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, do I sound good then? You sound fantastic. Why? Thank you. Also joining us from Montreal, Mr. Rene Ritchie at imore.com. Hello, Hello Leo. Renee. How are you? I enjoy seeing Alex's green screen, quite, flank, quite frankly. I know. I like to see that. Behind the curtain. You know, yeah. let me tell you, there was a lot of uh, drama around the green screen. Um, <laughs> it took a, like, it, it didn't come out quite the way we wanted it. We, we, you know, the guys worked on it, and then we brought a painter in to do it. And, you know, you have to use, we plastered it. Um, you know, to make sure it was nice and smooth. And then we added two coats of white and then we added the, the thing and it's still got little bits of, you know, it was, it was, it was, it turned out to be more drama than I expected, but I'm it's sorry, done. Alex, Alex do, you, do you ever go for the double bluff where you be sitting in front of a green screen and what you insert is video of a, another green screen? I love doing that. So it looks, I, what like, I actually so like, it looks like you're sitting in front of a green screen, but you're actually sitting into a composite of a photo <laughs> Of a green screen, green screen studio. Yeah, well, I like to, I like to take it and I like to key myself out of the green screen and put myself into in front of a blue screen. You know that that, <laughs> yes. kind of, that really throws people off. You know, and and uh, well, the nice thing if you wear a blue shirt like this and I have a green screen when I'm actually doing the keying, I can actually change the color of my shirt. You know, 
Nice. I see you, you, you nearly talked me into buying like that 70 inch like monitor as my background. But I did I did decide that if I ever do get that for like the first six shows, it will just be a photo of this slightly wrinkled background. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, that's absolutely what you have to do. Yeah, and yeah, I, yeah, and I will be and you and I will be the only people who know that. <laughs> Right <laughs> until yeah. until there's like until there's like a glitch in the matrix during the middle of a show that I engineer. Do you flip somebody flipped a switch? Your ski, your screen is now keyed out, Alex. You're sitting in a in a black background. Oh, somebody flipped a switch. Nice. Things. Bo. Sure. What? Somebody You're on the me. Charlie Rose set all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, I, I didn't realize that. I should have just pulled this out, and then you guys could do the keying on your side, and oh, yeah. then I don't have to think about it. Yeah, we could side. do. We could put anything behind you. Yeah, Maybe, maybe at one of the commercial breaks, I'll pull it out. Put, yeah, pull well. out the TV and uh, and uh, let's get a picture of the Taj Mahal. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> we can say, Alex Lindsay reporting from Kuala Lumpur. Should I pull it out, I pull it out right now? Yeah, go ahead. While we're while you're doing that, I will uh, I will mention that uh, we had our own. We here in the United States, we have our own Grey Cup. It's <laughs> well played, sir. <laughs> it's a, a little football game. <laughs> You need four downs, right? Is that true? Yes. I've heard that rumor. Yeah, yes. it takes you four downs to get we it done. All right. We don't play it quite right, but we manage somehow to survive. Uh, the NFL has its uh, little game called the Super Bowl, and they had it on Sunday. Tim Cook was there. He had good seats. He didn't have a great camera, though. <laughs> He's kind of getting ribbed because he posted a fairly blurry picture. Yeah, that wasn't well thought out. Uh, using this iPhone uh, 6S Plus. So uh, here's a here's a good tweet from uh, Andy Coe, <laughs> Soja Boy. Tell him shot on iPhone six. It's the new campaign with a blurry picture. <laughs> Optical image stabilization does not get up to a CEO jumping up and down rapidly in his seat yelling. I think you know what? I think a linebacker nudged him because he then posted another one that was crystal clear, and pulled this one down. By the way, so don't go looking for it on his feed. <laughs> Somebody Imagine said like this mission control somewhere, someone in, in the Apple Tower is going, oh no, Tim's got a blurry picture. <laughs> alert, alert, red alert. Wah, wah, wah. And the troops mm -hmm. just like the little yeah. elves go yeah. It's kind of silly. Yep. It also shows that Google's social media game is not on point because they should have had, well, of course, if you had one of the Nexus 6P phones with its larger pixels, that doesn't even need optical image stabilization because a super fast lens can go for a much shorter uh, shutter speed. Like I think everyone's all over everybody else. Uh, I think it was probably wise not to do the Schadenfreude thing because you know what? It can bite you. Yeah. And then Larry yeah. Page posts a picture and it's all over. So just, <laughs> you know, it, these things happen. Every camera can take a crappy picture. <laughs> Even the iPhone. It's not the camera. But any Instagram star will tell you. Photographer. Yes. Yeah, you take, you take 13 carefully lit selfies and then you hate all of them. So you take another 30 and then you try to find one that with a lot of image manipulation looks like it, it's a normal person. And then yeah. you post that one. Yeah. Yeah, That's yeah. why I love photography. It's, it's like baking cookies. They <laughs> they see the perfect 12 chocolate chip round cookies that you put in the basket. They don't see the 40 that were half brown and half black and half lumpy that and half ate sad. Before the basket. Well, and and I, I often thought when I when I really got um, into photography that one of the big things, that one of the big differences between uh, someone who's a professional and someone who was an amateur for a while was just that they took a lot more photos. I mean, you know, there's definitely a, a you know, the, um, you, you, you get the response, you get to figure out what you're doing right and wrong. Uh, yeah. So, but, but, um, taking a lot of photos turns out to be a big piece of moving. And in fact, when we started doing it, it was all film. So it was really expensive. I, I interviewed uh, a couple of uh, weeks ago in triangulation, Vincent LaFore. And I know, you know, wow. he's a great photographer. Oh, yeah. Love him. And he said, Really, as a professional photographer, and he's world famous, takes amazing images. He's also uh, now a director, uh, does uh, a lot of uh, video, does uh, commercials and stuff. Um, he said the, the downside to everybody having great cameras and even in their smartphone and taking lots of pictures and amateurs becoming so good is in order to you know, rise above the noise, you have to take not, not exceptionally good pictures. The technology doesn't have it's, – it's, you have to take – you have to find amazing – unusual you have to go the extra mile to get a weird shot basically yeah. his latest book is of uh, aerial shots he actually yeah. i think he won't say because i think he's not allowed to uh, but i'm pretty sure he collaborated with if not shot apple's uh beautiful screensaver for the uh apple tv the new apple tv the very slow motion aerial shots um yeah. and he has a book of, of beautiful aerial shots and he said you know 
now you have to rent a helicopter and yeah. <laughs> get a, go in the air because because there's so you know and I feel the kind of the same way you know what am I what do you take another picture of the Eiffel Tower can you say something that hasn't been said yet that's going to be an interesting challenge anyway why Tim does selfie Leo yeah selfie selfie so popular because it's unique it's actually why I like to take um, uh, do people pictures street photography and stuff because those are always unique and people are always interesting. But this is uh, Tim's bet, second picture from the Super Bowl, and a lot crisper. Uh, interestingly, both were uh, square aspect ratio. Now, the phone will do that, but I wonder why he chose that. Or, or is that a Twitter thing? Maybe Twitter was cropping it. Yeah. I don't know. Now, did he take... If did uh, I would be surprised if he didn't take the opportunity to post any motion photos... Oh, uh, with the, that wonderful oh, he new did picture. on China or, side, uh, on the Chinese side. He did, but Twitter doesn't support it. So his only motion picture is currently on the uh, China side. Was it Cybo Weibo? 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 Oh, it does. It will support yeah. the live photo feature. They they shipped it before Twitter. Wow, not not, not really a surprise. Twitter's <laughs> developers are just sh sitting in their corners shaking. <laughs> uh, wow, does Facebook support live photo? They do, but it's sort of like a lot of the stuff that they're supporting in like Instagram now. They roll it out to a percentage, a small percentage Not everybody of has on an ongoing basis. Yeah. So you should have it. And they also, they made it maddening because when you go to add a photo, there's a tiny icon in the bottom right that has that shows live photo turned off. And you have to tap it to turn it on before you post. Right. Otherwise, regardless if it's a live photo or not, it's going to put up the, the static image. So you got to like go through this process. And oh. real, first, you got to find the live photo, which Apple doesn't make easy. And then you've got to uh, turn it on before you post it to Facebook. So it's, it's a double whammy. Mm. It's too bad that they haven't. Uh, I, I'm, I'm using the, a similar feature on the the new Nexus phones, which all it does is it will capture it captures a burst. Not only does it say, "Okay, of this burst, here are the eight that we think are the best," and here the, here you can now choose to write them or not write them, but it will also just simply write them also as an animated GIF. And it's like that would have been nice, given that animated GIF or GIFs are pretty much everywhere. It's a standard understood format. You can get a third-party app that'll do that. I'll convert. I'll file that right yeah, but tonight. It's, but it's but it's not as nice as just. I agree. Click post done. Yep. Well, Twitter. Samsung Vivid Photos will fix everything. We'll get that in a couple of weeks, and then we'll all be happy. <laughs> yeah, because so Samsung is everything. having their event on the twenty-first, which is uh oh look, Alex Lindsay's relocated himself. In the Taj Mahal. Uh, you know, it's it's important. You know, I, I felt like uh, the bandwidth here in the Taj Mahal is actually much better than I expected. It looks like a very sunny day. A beautiful yeah, day. Yeah, and, uh, so and I'm afraid I'm gonna get ground. burned, but uh, but I'm <laughs> taking one. You know, it's you can see the a lot of a lot of sunlight here. But uh. wow, wow. Tim did have a town hall right before the Super Bowl, and uh, Mark Gurman at nine to five Mac got the story, um, and it was kind of after their uh, you know earnings announcement. I wish we they would broadcast this stuff. I, it's an it all was hands. Wednesday at nine a.m. right after the earnings call. I happened to be at the hotel across the street. Oh, <laughs> did you see people filing in? Uh, there was a lot of activity. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. I don't think everybody went there live. They could they could log in remotely to right. watch it. Right. It yeah. looks like it was. It actually looks like a keynote. You know, like he's got big screen behind him and he's presenting. He's got a. Clicker. Well, I think that's not. The, I think that's a picture from a keynote. Oh, that is a that's keynote. A picture of the town oh. hall. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. That's too bad. I guess they probably didn't sneak pictures out of the town hall. Well, town hall's pretty cool anyway. Yeah. One well, town. Uh, in town. Most of these companies do town halls after their quarterlies. Right. I mean, it's just something. Right. This one. You want to do an, they talk an all about, hands. But it's, and, Get everybody in and say, here's what's going yeah. on. Uh, they and introduced the new chief operating officer, <laughs> Jeff Williams. Answered questions from the audience. Uh, according to Mark, attempting to reduce concerns related to the company's iPhone dependence, discussing porting more Apple services to Android. Growth in yeah. India. That's why Alex is there, I believe. Yes. And, and <laughs> releasing cheaper iPhones. Oh, he's moved. Where is he now? He's in the library. In the library. With Professor soon Plum and the candlestick. But soon I will be in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> You're with that Miss Scarlet Hall, aren't you? <laughs> I swear. Your upstairs uh, maid, their tongues are wagging all about you two. You got no secrets <laughs> from the staff, mister. <laughs> He said that Apple sold enough iPhones in their uh, holiday quarter, 74.8 million units, to cover the populations of New York, London, Beijing, and Shanghai. I'm not sure if he means cover like to put one in everybody's hand or actually like bury them. Like a blanket or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
It's a lot. Nice marketing effort from Apple is just to drop them just from the sky. We could just you in iPhone. iPhone vests for everybody. <laughs> yes, yes, the Scott Bourne iPhone vest. <laughs> Uh, he did say that the Apple Watch was one of the hottest holiday gifts. His hottest hot selling, I don't know. And claimed the sales of the device exceeded those of the original iPhone on its first holiday quarter. That's not really saying much. The first iPhone took, uh, I think, a year to get to a million sales, right? It took a while. Also, it was only, well, it was only, only available on, yeah. on AT&T, so. Right. Yeah. Mm, he says he expects iPad revenue growth to return by the end of 2016. That must mean they're bullish both on the iPad Pro and the features of this new iPad that might might or might not come out in March. I, I have to admit, I was kind of surprised also, that that you know they're talking about the iPad Air possibly being released, and 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 I feel like I would want either the Mini or the Pro. I don't know if I'm that excited about the Air anymore. I think you, if the Air, and we talked about this last week, you weren't here, but I think if the Air had a pencil, yeah. Well, I think if the Mini had a pencil, I'd be happy. Yeah, ill notes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I, I would, I would actually prefer the mini with a pencil. With I, mean, pencil I, got, really? I was all excited about the Pro because it had a pencil. Right. Uh, you know, the size of it is still a little bit much for me. You know, to carry around as as much. I would much rather have a mini with the fingerprint and the and the pencil. I'd be, I think I'd be done. How is uh, pencil availability these days? Do we know? Better. Very good. You can go into a store and get one now. Yeah, I, I went into a couple stores last week and I was asking around and both of them had uh, had stock. I've also been here. I haven't checked the Apple store in a while, but uh, people are telling me that uh, they've been able to get immediate delivery. Hey, good. I'm freeze framing on. Actually, I keep <laughs> what did you do? Like is, a this a, is, this, sort of thing. is this related to your Trek bicycle, this wound on your hand? Oh, or were well, you hanging yeah, out I with Jimmy Fallon? I had a, I had a small yeah. no no I was sober uh, there was I had I, I it was my first biking related injury and it made me feel like a badass even though it was like the silliest thing I've I actually had to, love this shot because you could be talking exactly <laughs> I'm, I'm about to say I can, I can, as a matter of fact you could like translate me into German right now and no one would be any the wiser for, for and people who are not watching also, the video I've said the, I said the wrong thing at the beginning of the show because I said you don't need video and then we're talking about Alex being in Abu Dhabi and then. Yes, yeah, so he's so for those who are listening, Andy's frozen with his hand over his mouth, and it's really great because you could actually just continue to talk, and we wouldn't know. Oh, good heavens! Well, before before we <laughs> we hang up and call back, I'll just finish. What I was about to say yes. uh, the, the 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 one thing that I didn't anticipate needing on the bike was a kickstand. Oh, uh, because yeah, and so basically, so basically, I was I was taking it out of the rack, and I was it was like starting to tip over, and I just reached out to oh, grab yeah. it to keep it from tipping over and then the bike like pulled me over and it landed on my on my knuckles oh, so it wasn't like was not, not, no nothing bro nothing broken it just have this like scab on the yeah on the see the I've pavement done, leo I, yeah i've done that i've done that before but i'm telling people that i had a so, so, some bikers uh were saying ungentlemanly things towards uh towards a lady and i had to step in and, and much better correct back. much better yes. story uh you know it's funny uh, lisa mocks me because i didn't get a kickstand on my bicycle either yeah, I, I get when I got when I got home, I washed off the blood. I applied, applied some back teen, and then I went went on Amazon and I ordered a kickstand. <laughs> they are easily easily self installed. That, that, that. Let's take a break while we get uh, Andy because we've just lost him now. Uh, while we get Andy back, click in the middle of it. Uh, we're talking Mac, and we have lots of Apple news. I just I had to start with that blurry photo just because I thought you know it's timely. But Alex Lindsay's here from could be anywhere. We'll find out where he is now. Okay. Uh, He's in the kitchen. <laughs> it's a nice kitchen. I I actually would like to keep this kitchen. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> sunny day. This is my kind Center of kitchen. Phil. Yeah. It's, Call yeah. Pixel Core, your home improvement pros. Call for free estimate. <laughs> I've been thinking that maybe we should. We're you know we're moving. We're going to have to move to a new studio. We've been looking at spaces. Uh, I posted uh, the latest. The one that we were hoping to get uh, fell through after an eighty-page lease. Uh, that we couldn't really come to any agreement on. So uh, wow. we're looking at a new place, which actually I prefer because it's, uh, it's a completely wide open. It doesn't have any um, anything in it. It's just an empty place that we could put our anything into. And uh, Is it a barn? No, it's just a tilt-up, you know, industrial thing. Um, but we liked it, right, John? I mean, uh, because it's a blank, a blank canvas. But what I was thinking is, now that I look at this, we should probably just put green screen yes. in and we could be in the kitchen. Or That's what, prequel. 
there are there are many sets that that you know that do that. So it, it, the the challenge is really if you're not going to move the cameras, uh, you can actually get away with it pretty easily. We don't. So, They're all locked. I know in. you don't move the cameras. You know so. what we could even do is film video. We did this when we did the first TV show for Ziff Davis back in the day. Uh, we shot it at Apple, Apple, the old Apple TV in Cupertino, and they went to uh, Esprit, to Susie Tompkins' office, and they just made a high quality video for about half an hour. You said the leaves are blowing. It's an empty office. And then Gina Smith and I were sitting, and Jim Lauterbach, were sitting on chairs in front of a green screen, and they put that back, and it looked like we were in a real place because it wasn't, it was moving. Awesome. Well, yeah, and if you match the focal lengths and everything else uh, you fairly well, you can, and... you can get away with it. The, the, the big challenge is, is, that, <laughs> is that you, every angle, you just have to think about all the angles right. that you might use, and then you shoot things that are for that angle. Right. Yeah, um, you know, because, you, you know, you, <laughs> you don't want rapper, this right? to happen. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That is. Whoa. And if so, the camera anyway, so. moves, that's really weird because you, yeah, camera, you move in perspective, but <laughs> the background is not. Right. But we've done a lot of stuff. We do um, a fair bit of work where we put, you know, an executive at a conference right. when they're not. But it, you want to look like it's from their office, but we, they don't right. want us to set up there. <laughs> so, right. so we go in and shoot <laughs> shoot some video from their yeah. from their from their uh, at their uh, corporation, you know, with people walking by and everything else. But you shoot it with the exact same camera, same height, same focal length, and then you put it behind them, and no one knows. I mean, everyone thinks that they're just sitting in the yeah. middle of nobody's the thinking cafeteria. That. And I think yeah. the TriCaster has uh, built in a lot of automated features, like having a different background for each camera angle and things like that. That. It does. It, it's doing the keying, and it does a very good job for real time uh, keying. Certainly, I could do a weather forecast. With it. <laughs> <laughs> Funny, but a little. You know, I think it's reasonably good. I always wanted to do an internet weather forecast on this network, like ever. You know, well, I wanted to do it on Tech TV originally. Like, we'd break in the internet traffic report. Well, it's a little bit slow on May West, but May East is at full full of speed, full capacity. There's a wrecked, no, should, there's it, a wrecked router it, it, it in, should, uh, could, in Ohio. It should be from the point of view of excuses that will definitely play. You should be able to say that. Uh, Gmail is still getting through just fine. However, there is a Verizon <laughs> partial router <laughs> failure in the in the upper Washington State area. So if you if iOS is your provider, I would uh, uh, so just to have people say that you do have a two hour to three hour delay for mail. <laughs> We're going to Captain uh, Cap Mandy up in the uh, Twit helicopter, looking down over the uh, interconnect. In Michigan, oh what does it God, look like? That turkey. <laughs> it's on fire. It's on fire. <laughs> All right, let's take a break. <laughs> we'll come back with more, more silliness. Our show today brought to you by Texture. I've flown with Alex Lindsay, and I was I was actually really impressed because Alex, before we got on the plane, he would go to the airport magazine store and he'd buy the Economist, just stock up, have a like a stack yeah. of magazines because that was your reading time. And all exactly. of that's well and good, but then <clears throat> when you just leave the pile on the plane, what do you do? I did. I just left them in. I didn't. I was like, that was from my travels. And then I, I, I'd get one or two magazines or three magazines, read them, and then I'd get to the other end. I'd be like, okay, I'm done with that. I love it. Um, and I, But now we've got a better way, which is all the magazines uh, on your iPad or your iPhone, um, all the best magazines, uh, and, and you just, it's like Netflix for magazines. You pay one monthly fee and you get everything. And the truth is, there is usually in, in many magazines one or two articles every month I want to read. Uh, so there's, you know, there's always, <clears throat> almost always a Wired article I want to read. There's almost always a uh, article in Vanity Fair I want to read, G uh, Rolling Stone. But I don't want to subscribe, and it's really ridiculously expensive if you just buy that issue on the newsstand. Not to mention the clutter on your coffee table or, or in the airplane seat when you leave. This is such a good solution. You can download them. It, it will actually keep your, uh, you say, I want to get the latest edition of this and this and this and this every week. And it'll automatically have that on there. It has past uh, issues as well as the one on the newsstands today. And and because you can download it, you could do it offline. You're, basically, you've got all the magazines on your iPad. From Men's Health to Men's Fitness to e GQ to Esquire, Forbes or Fortune. National Geographic, I love photography, so popular photography, Shutterbug. If you're interested in hi-fi, audio, sound and vision, PC Magazine and Macworld are there too. It's, it's really kind of remarkable. And you know what? Every once in a while I have a hankering to find out what's going on in the world of entertainment. And Entertainment Weekly is in there too, as well as people and us. Uh, I like to, I like to read the gossip magazines too. Texture.com slash MacBreak. You can try it for free right now. 
And it's just like the magazine. You click uh, the headlines on the cover page, it takes you right to the article. Actually, that's not just like, is it? But all the pages are there. You don't, you don't miss anything. You can page through it if you want. There's also uh, bonus features you can't get in a magazine like video. They have a curated uh, collection feature that lets you dive deeper into particular topics. They have an editorial team that recommends daily stories. You never will run out of great stuff to read. And for a fraction of the price, uh, it would cost you at the grocery store. Buy three magazines once a month at the grocery store. You're spending more than a subscription to Texture. Go to Tech. They have two plans. So uh, you could see which one fits your budget and your needs. Go to texture.com slash MacBreak right now, though, and you get uh, the premium plan. You can try it for free and see how you like it. Texture.com slash MacBreak. It's really a great idea. And it makes you You also don't wind up stinking like perfume, like eight different kinds of Do perfume. Do they still liquor. blow in perfume into <laughs> into women's magazines? That's just terrible. I hate that. Oh, so, so some weeks that's the only reason why I don't smell like three days of writer funk. <laughs> <You're glam> <laughs> Thank God Glamour Magazine came just in the nick of time. Yeah, you know, a little GQ magazine, you just take that little piece of paper and you scrape it up against the tree. Ah, you're moving down the uh, peninsula now. He's in, uh, you know, I figured I'd, I'd, in Cupertino at one infinite loop. Well, now that this teleportation engine works, I can uh, <laughs> in India, I can jump to Apple. I can, <laughs> He's I on can, the space station. Oh, my gosh. Say hi to Commander Kelly. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> 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 okay. Now you have to download the video. <laughs> He's floating in space. You do you do uh, weightless very well, Alex. Actually, no, that, that's 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 not quite what I what I see. I usually see them like you, you see a shot like this, more like Alex <laughs> and he's yeah, yeah yeah. Well, Commander Kelly has been there for almost a year now, three hundred thirty three days, something like that, and uh, he yep. looks very buff. I think yeah, he'll be coming back. Uh, but yep. I feel like. Oh man, you've been lifting, and then I realized, you know, it's probably edema from the lack of gravity. Yeah, <laughs> and he's, so they, really, he's just the Michelin man up there. The one thing I can't do is every time we, we we've done a couple events with the space station, and every time someone asks, "Are you really in the space station?" that they, they they just do the slow flip. Yeah, they always they always kind of hard to do that on a wire. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't, yeah. I can't quite. Yeah, they're like they're like do this, and then they'll be sitting there. Uh, we were doing one with the crew of Star Trek, and and they. Uh, and, and he's just like talking to them and he's just spinning the mic. You know, like, like when he's not talking, when he's listening for them. There we go. There we go. You kind of get used to it, don't I'm you? Just that, showing off. Yeah, yeah. They're yeah. just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, like spinning the mic, but like letting it go and then just, just like rolling in you front of your, You barf your guts out for the first two weeks and then it's like, yeah, I'm used you know, to it. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. it seems like it'd be kind of fun. You just kind of go you just float Man. everywhere. Yeah. Did Never you see? Like get used to the smell. Though, Andy, did you see the Colbert show right after the Super Bowl where he actually goes to says hello to Commander Kelly? Oh, yep, yep. That's that was pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that's yeah, that, that's pretty cool. He they had him at, at Kelly as a guest like two weeks earlier or something. That must have been when they pre taped it. But yeah, that's that, that's like Kelly particularly. It's like every single every single time. It's not as bad as I made it sound, but it's so it's he's always like got his arms crossed and he's just like his shoulders are a little yeah. bit up and say. Well, well, Stephen, I'm just glad for this opportunity to uh, share some of the involvement here at on uh, Crew 68 of the International Space Station. Yeah. The uh, he what I noticed he did does is he sticks his uh, feet. There's a there are, there yeah. are bars under you know all the way down, and he can stick his feet under there and hold and hold on, and that's how he keeps from just kind of drifting away during the interview. Yeah. Uh, we should mention Edgar Mich Mitchell, one of the men uh, who walked on the moon, passed away. Uh, this past week, and then uh, as long as we're talking Super Bowl, did you see the Audi commercial? Uh, that was to me. I think yeah. that was my uh, partly because it had David Bowie. There were a number of commercials with David Bowie music in it. Uh, in fact, mo the music of my generation was very much celebrated during the Super yeah. Bowl commercial. Um, but uh, let me see if I can find the Starman commercial. I don't. Well, this wasn't a real. Was that a real uh, astronaut or or just someone? playing one in the commercial it's kind of a kind of a cool tribute to the astronaut corps the, the the premise is he's an older fella young as a young man he uh he, he traveled to the moon but now you know he just sits listlessly in his uh, in his apartment he won't eat his meals because uh well you've been to the moon what are you gonna do and his <laughs> and his son comes along and says dad come here i got i got something for you and he shows him an Audi R8 and gives him the key. 
and suddenly <laughs> memories of his days in an astronaut come back while David Bowie, yeah. you can hear the David Bowie music swelling. You know, that, that's not too arrogant, is it? I mean, <laughs> one, of the, one of 12 people who've walked on the moon, but hey, buying a luxury sedan yeah. is probably yeah. just as good. Get him an R8. He'll, Dad will feel much better. <laughs> And I love the. I gotta say, I, I love the music. I thought that was a great ad. I really yeah, do. Yeah. That, that was that was cool. Yeah. I, 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 the, it, the the career of acting, of being an actor, must have its ups and downs. I know. But if you get one role, even if it's in a commercial, where you get to wear an authentically recreated Apollo spacesuit and sit inside an authentically recreated <laughs> command and service module or lunar module. And just close your eyes and oh. pretend for a good eight seconds. Yeah. That will all the, the 20 years of no callbacks and having to work <laughs> children's birthday parties are all worth it. Yeah. Just for yeah. just for that. Just when, all I want is one photo. You know, you in know a that would actually suit. Yeah. that would actually be a really good attraction. You know, like to build to build the, the the module and to and to build some suits that are different sizes, let people get into them and then give them like the radio stuff and give them you know, it's kind of fun for NASA. Wouldn't that well don't they have space camp? You can do that. Can't you? Know, but yeah, fun. but you can make it a portable. I want, thing. I, I want a fantasy camp. Yeah. I want. Uh, I want, especially if if they uh, if they got the they use the same plans they used to build the sets for Apollo 13, and they have a special version of that of the uh, they, they, they have the commercial version of the vomit comet. How much <laughs> yeah. money? I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd spend 20 million dollars to go to the ISS. I would definitely spend 250 thousand dollars to again wear Apollo <laughs> accurate spacesuits, <laughs> be in a, a be in a mockup, and be in zero gravity again. Oh, if it's just, I, I know it's a big lie. But oh boy, what a wonderful, beautiful lie! That you just have to figure out how you're going to clean off all those crevices all the time for all the, you know, <laughs> claws cap in that's our a, chat room. Full, you, yeah, you have three of them. You swap them out. You make sure that remember, remember that like they, these are all mil spec switches, so you could probably hose them down. <laughs> okay. it's not like, and, 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 and they don't have to fine. be operational. It's not like you're going to exactly. hurt the electronics. They, lights just, lights just <laughs> simply have to come way. on. Like the barber right. pole has to turn on when you dock. That sort of stuff. <laughs> the eight ball needs to turn. That's all you need. Cloth Cap in our chat room says, please don't make NASA a LARP event. <laughs> Live action role playing. Hey, maybe some good news. I got a lot of people tweeted me this after <clears throat> my complaints about the black, beautiful black trash can Mac. Not really, <laughs> really, you know, seeming to be very reliable. It's Apparently, an object it's beautiful. And it, by the way, it's it's held up quite well as a Minecraft server. Yeah. Uh, but I don't have a, I don't really use it with a monitor hooked up. And apparently, Apple is quietly launching a repair program for late 2013 Mac Pros. Mine would qualify for graphics card and video issues. Um, this is uh, Mac Pros manufactured between February 18th, February 8th, 2015. I think I think they have the dates wrong there. That's not right. Yeah, if it says late 2013, what does this that's mean? The, that's the I new MacBook. It's just the, they they call it by the model of the period of time that it was introduced. So oh. it's, it's the Mac, sorry, the Mac Pro that was introduced in late 2013 and on. Ah. Okay, so that's the model is the late 2013, yes. but in fact, it's only one's manufacturer. So mine's left out of the. This is not. I don't think mine. I can't remember when it was. It's not going to help us. Then. I'd have to look. But apparently, if you have one manufactured between Feb 8 and April 11th of last year, you're eligible for repairs due to issues with the machine's graphics cards that may cause distorted video, no video, system instability, freezing, restarts, shutdowns, or may prevent system startup. Uh. So how do you get it? Well, you go to an authorized service provider with your Mac Pro and, and say, here, look. And uh, and there you go. They will uh, fix it free of charge, even though you may be out of warranty. You'll Some of you are one day out of warranty as we, <laughs> as we record this. It's not, uh, it hasn't been publicly announced. So this, I guess, this uh, bulletin, which was sent to uh, employees and service providers was leaked When it's out. a small amount of people, they tend to do it directly because it stops a lot of people from worrying and suddenly yeah. rushing to the Apple store. So I shouldn't have mentioned this. No, I mean, yeah, that's what we're here for. Right. Well, you know who you are. You just look and see when yours was manufactured. Yep. I, I wish they'd have had like a range of serial numbers. That would have made it a lot easier to figure out because you don't know when yours was manufactured, only when you got it. Yep. Uh, anyway, I don't. so this doesn't apply to mine. But it's okay. You know, it makes an excellent uh, Minecraft server. It's just very quiet. It sits there. The cat's knocked it off the uh, the, the desk, and uh, it. I put it back, and it worked. 
So yeah. that's good. <laughs> it worked as well as it did before. <laughs> it worked as well. Now, where is, where is Alex? Oh, you're in this, the Fifth Avenue Mac Apple store. Yeah, you know, I do need to do a little <laughs> shopping. I got to buy some head, <laughs> headset, headphones. Um, I was at the Apple store and at Cupertino, and they didn't have what I needed. So you just to, uh, tran transport. teleported up to Fifth Avenue. Yeah, yeah you know, it's this, this, this machine's pretty working. Hopefully I don't lose any bits. You know, that's the only thing I'm worried the about. The only yeah, drawback, we haven't routed it properly, so we can't do the wide shot because you... <laughs> It's pretty. It's apparent the the <laughs> flim flammery that we are doing doesn't work with the wide shot. But we could have made it that way. We just have to route it better. As you can see, the ISS is currently over Greenland. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in the cupola. Uh, uh, it, uh, it's true. Virgil's pointing out that if you saw the right stuff, the movie The Right Stuff, that those early uh, Mercury astronauts <clears throat> all like to drive their Corvettes very fast. Oh, yeah, they had they, they had a sweetheart, Beach. especially on like the the Apollo crews. They actually had a sweetheart deal with like local dealers that would like give them kind of like a free, actually a free like one year lease on sure. Corvettes, and then they so, could like, sell the Apollo, it for twice as much, right? Yeah, the, the Apollo twelve crew actually had matching uh, Corvettes uh, with like LMP, CMP, <laughs> CDR, <laughs> like for Commander, <laughs> painted in black and gold like the lunar lander. Sure. Uh, it was it was oh, pretty man. awesome. And then, but they could sell that when they get it back for a yep. premium because it was driven by an astronaut. Yep. Um, Business Insider says the evidence is clear. I think we said this last week as well that Apple is very interested in virtual reality. Um, they're staffing up, according you know that's that's pretty clear. Uh, in fact, uh, they have created a team for augmented and virtual reality headsets. They're, they've been building prototypes for month, months, according to the Financial Times. I, we've all loved the idea of augmented reality almost as much as uh, virtual reality. And LinkedIn profiles and publicly available job listings uh, show things like Doug Bowman, the R Virginia Tech researcher, going to Apple. Nick Thompson, who worked on the HoloLens for Microsoft. And Apple's bought at least four startups that specialized in related technologies. It's a good rundown. We've talked about all this stuff individually, but when you put it all together, wow. Matayo, which was a German company that made an app that visualizes what digital furniture might look like in your home. Face Shift, which transforms a user's face into 3D digital cartoons in real time. And, and if you think about Face Shift, uh, you know, this is, I think that um, that one could be kind of interesting because one of the problems with you know, people talking to each other in VR is that they're wearing goggles. You can't really, you know, have them in the in the shot, you know, and they're in the middle of it. Right. Um, you know, having something that could theoretically look at your face and, you know, um, drive an avatar's face so that you're talking to, I could talk to the cartoon version of you and you talk to the cartoon version of me, you know, in inside of virtual reality. I think that might be some... and I don't know anything, but I, but I think that when I was trying to, I was trying to figure out what they'd be doing with that. Um, and it seems like that might be a valid reason to have that kind of technology is so that you could build a virtual world where you're able to talk to a lot of other people face to face, um, possibly generating a face from theirs. I mean, there's a lot of technology out there right now that you can take a, a single photo straight on of somebody and it'll build a 3D model of their face. You know, like it'll, you know, and that's been around for a decade. Uh, and so uh, being able to uh, you know, you could theoretically take a picture of yourself and end up with an avatar that looked very much like you, um, that was driven by your by your actual facial. You can you do know. that right now. In fact, I've seen uh, videos of people from uh, was it at E3 or maybe it was at CES? Was it CES getting 3D captured into mm -hmm. Fallout 4? Yeah, because in yeah. Fallout 4 it's you can design. You know, <laughs> at the beginning of the game, you and your wife go into the bathroom and look in the mirror, and you design your character. Well, it's easy enough to apply, of course, a texture map that you get from some sort of motion capture. This well, now, and, and, and now, I mean, there's scanners now that you can literally walk in and it will, you walk into a trailer and it will build a very high resolution wow. uh, 3D model of you in, you know, minutes. You do yeah, that. So, I mean, you were doing yeah. that next door when you were over here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we do. We, we have motion capture and we've definitely done what's called photogrammetry to, to produce those. It's been a little, our version of it was a little bit more manual. Uh, but there are, if you if you throw a lot of money at it, there are definitely people who can now capture, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and actors are now get it, doing that. There's a lot of actors that get themselves scanned now, especially if they're younger, to make sure that, you know, when you think about flashbacks, they go back to um, an actor, uh, you know, when they were younger or or if an actor, you know, passes away and you want to put them into back into a film, you know, being able to get scanned when they're younger at their prime 
uh, means that they possibly could lease their likeness um, even so they could be 60 years old and leasing the likeness of their 24 year old version um, you know and so those are all things that are you know already being used to some degree you know so those and and uh, I mean right now what they do is they use they do a process called well there's a they call it marker, markerless motion capture. I remember you drawing dots on my head. Yeah, yeah, that was the the, the first, the early <laughs> version Frank of photogrammetry. That was, oh my God, he actually yeah, felt Yeah, I was like, couldn't wash those off something. for days. Yeah, you know, I, I, I thought that a permanent marker would be kind of fun. You know, so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, that was... Why do, uh, why do the dots happen to spell out jerk? No, 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 that's just, that's just, that's just a pattern just happened. No, 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 don't, don't worry about it. Fractal. That's that, that, that. Yeah, that is how we triangulate the surface. That's you know that's that's the that's necessary. Exactly. Here from the uh, Chevy press room commemorating 50 years of Corvettes and astronauts. Chevy must have been pissed when they saw that Audi ad. Pictures of Alan Shepard uh, with his white 1962 Corvette coupe with a customized space age interior. Um, Charles Pete Conrad. These are the Apollo 12 astronauts you were talking about. Richard Francis Gordon and uh, Alan Bean with their identical 1969 Corvette Stingray Coupes, 390 horsepower, 400, 427 V8 engine, black accented Riverside gold color scheme, designed by Alan Bean. Nice. Yep. Now, was this just this uh, did this press release just come out? No. no. Somebody in the chat room, Virgil, found it. No, I was wondering if they were like they saw the Audi commercial. Yeah, like, really. Uh, we were there. First. Yeah, you know what? They don't drive R8s. They drive Vets. Yeah. <laughs> I'm you're kind of surprised they don't. If I was, if I was uh, Chevy, I would definitely give a Corvette to every astronaut that's ever been. Why not? Place. You know, like it's, it's not. There's well, not, they got, not many they, of them. There, there might be. Oh, yeah. Well, it's every, it's every uh, surviving astronaut. Yeah. Right. There, there, yeah. There's so many. Like Apollo. I don't know whether it was Apollo 15. I think it was Apollo 15. There were enough semi-scandals happening on a regular basis regarding like mercury astronauts accepting like free furniture and free like <laughs> mi minus minus eight percent mortgages on a on a new home in uh, in houston and then there was the uh, the stamp cover scandal i think that was apollo 15 where they had they, they basically took uh, pre they, they took a uh, commemorative stamp covers and as they're part of their per their personal kits canceled them in space and then like they were uh, the, the person they did the deal with kind of screwed them over and started selling them immediately instead yeah. of five years from then. And so now there's a whole bunch of rules on what you can and cannot accept and do. Uh, but I, I always I, I always thought the, the nicest thing that I, it's it's too bad that NASA didn't uh, the, the, the space shuttle didn't pay off the way that it was intended to pay off. Because if there was always if every third or fourth mission, there was one seat available for a f ex astronaut in their 60s. Apollo astronauts given priority that we will will fly you up one more time in a much more comfortable seat with a lot more space uh, and we'll have we'll give you a lot less to do so for the first thank you for risking your life and increasing your risk of cancer and other kinds of death by doing all the stuff in the 60s and 70s please allow a tourist pass to the International Space Station or uh, to like a two weeks in orbit mm -hmm. I loved it when John Glenn got that seat uh, and they had they had, yeah. a, they had to say that oh well we're doing uh, research into the effects of space on the <laughs> elderly, <laughs> which is something which is something we were totally planning on doing one way or another. Right. Uh, but I don't think anybody could complain about that. Letting John Glenn be a spaceman again. Face shift that we were talking about uh, did the um, uh, face stuff, I guess, for Star Wars. So mm -hmm. that's a good company. Mm -hmm. Fly by yeah. Media, another company. They worked with Google and Apple on computer vision. Prime yeah. Sense. We mentioned that. We have talked about all this before, but when you see it all yeah. together. Uh, Business Insider it's, points out Apple is selling the Viewmaster, which is an augmented yeah, well, reality toy. Uh, that's, that's based based on Google uh, Google Cardboard. Yeah, but that's um, okay. That's okay. But that, no, that, that, that's fine too. I think it, it's interesting to wonder if they're not. If, I, I'm not sure that they're the company that's really set up to spike the ball with an actual VR product. I keep every time I see I read this these lists of acquisitions and see every new one. I wonder if their thoughts aren't aren't so much we're going to build our own VR platform so much as we are want to position ourselves so that when one of these standards. Uh, sets themselves up as this as the standard. If uh, uh, if Oculus is the standard, if whatever Google's setting up is going to be the standard, we are set up so that we can create ser services and software that are really going to take advantage of it. Uh, because they they've I, I I don't think that uh, Apple Watch I think was an indication of what happens when Apple tries to do consumer hardware where there is absolutely no existing template 
uh, or indication of what that market wants yet. Uh, they're not really good at setting that standard. Okay. They're, they're, good, they're good at improving it. But there is a rumor that the new iPhone in the fall, or the iPhone 7, will have a dual camera. This is coming out of the component managers in Asia. Um, that would be very useful for augmented reality, right, Renee? I mean, is that is how credible is that rumor? It's so funny to me because, like, I, I just imagine if we were all doing this show in 2005 and we heard, oh, you know, Apple's bought FingerWorks or something. They must be working on touchscreen Macs. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Apple, Apple is Apple is looking at uh, at 2G technology. We're going to soon be able to have wireless connection right from our MacBooks. Uh, and just like you're, what you're talking about now is always framed on, on what we think now, but Apple's thinking three or right. four or five years ahead. It's hard. To and they got right now they make displays in all sorts of sizes but like they were never a display company yeah they make the the thunderbolt display but it's really a technology that enables a product and vr sounds like uh, at least to me like you know to, i think andy made this point last week that it, it, an apple vr headset is is sort of interesting maybe but how apple approaches vr for the next five or ten years and they start making environments or interfaces because uh, i believe doug bowman is also really skilled in 3D interfaces, uh, there, could, there could be a wide range from cars to all sorts of things to living room entertainment systems that are based more on AR and VR than they, than any sort of thing that you strap on your head and then try to you know, look like Tron or one something. Of the, one of the things that I, I when I think about the, the Viewmaster specifically, uh, you know, it's one thing to have those two little lenses and a lot of the mock-ups have had those lenses right next to each other. But if they figured out a way to design those lenses um you know so, so your um your your sensors were the same distance as our eyes apart um on the back of the iphone or close you'd be able to take viewmaster photos and and video um you know on your iphone so you'd be able to basically take these and when you put it when you put it up it would you know you would put it on a little viewer for a viewmaster and you'd actually get a 3d photo you know, does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, no, be, I mean, they started doing it's, live it's, photos already. HTC yeah. did this some years ago. Remember they had a 3D yeah, there was, camera? Yeah, there were, it was uh, terrible. Yeah, Mo Mobile World Congress had, uh, for some reason, like in 2009, I think, like three different manufacturers were eager to show off yeah. uh, cameras that take 3D pictures. And they were kind of weird. You could actually, you could see it happen. You can see the picture on the screen without special glasses, but it really came down to how much does the user want the novelty of looking at a 3D photo. Uh, whereas everything that's happening in VR now is more like how do we create not necessarily a final product, but a platform that so that uh, so that developers and content creators can then look at, wow, if I have this platform, here's the stories I could tell or here's the software I could create with it. That's why like Magic Leap uh, uh, is, uh, for instance, they, they got th uh, another $750 million uh, in third round funding uh, last week. Uh, Google, uh, Google CEO is on the board. Wow. Uh, Google made is was part of the lead one, one of the lead investors for the f second round of 500 million of, of financing. Uh, everybody's invested in this, and the technology is really cool because it's not about having a screen that you're looking at, which is what the that uh, the Google Cardboard uh, and Oculus are based on. It really is a piece of hardware that will squirt light into your eye alongside whatever other light is coming at you from the room. So it's not as though it'll you're looking at a video of the world around you with other video added to it. It's you're looking at the world around you, and they have basically squirted extra fake, <laughs> fake bounced around elect, uh, person uh, in the uh, middle uh, attack, a light in you, the middle attack. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and so when you think about what could you do with this, when you can now, you're not limited by someone has to wear a, a screen on their head, and there's going to be a certain amount of lag. That's the stuff that's truly interesting. And there's so much movement right now that. Like I said, I, I find it easier to believe that Apple wants to make sure that whatever happens in the next five or ten years, they are well equipped to make sure that their software and their interfaces and their services take advantage of it. Uh, because, again, they, they, they just don't have the kind of focus right now to work on something. I'm sorry, I, that, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, obnoxious for me to say. I, I don't imagine them being as committed to creating a brand new platform like that, uh, given that it would – I can't imagine how it would interact directly with uh, an existing iOS or Mac OS uh, operating system. Well, we do know that they're going to that they're looking for somebody to design watch faces. There's um there's an, a listing for a software engineer to join <laughs> Apple Watch's dedicated clock face team. 
You know, I don't want them great. to. I, the other thing is, I don't want them to design watch faces. I want them to open that up. Yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. it's like ah. Oh, you know, but like, you know, I'm interested. Uh, just going back for one second though, like, there's something super interesting. In what Apple does is, for example, we had the home button for a long time, but then Touch ID made it smart, like not Terminator smart, but it knows who we are now. And we had microphones for a long time, but then Siri came along and it was smart. It could start distinguishing uh, sort of commands and using things like Prime Sense and all this technology. There's an argument to be made. You know, cameras are getting smart. They can do face detection already. They can do autofocus. But when you add two cameras in, they can do sort of all sorts of other math that lets them become smarter cameras. And it's all about, you know, there's like three microphones on an iPhone now, but it's not to record you in stereo. It's to do beamforming and other things to, to, to enable other technologies. And I think when we see those cameras, 3D is sort of like the obvious thing. But like Andy said, you know, everyone was doing that three years ago. But what else could they do with all the data they're pulling in from that? Yeah, that I, think I really, I really think... Th um, so to, to, just to, to directly uh, talk about the two cameras, I really think it's more of a computational photography solution than anything 3D uh, because the things that you can do by simply taking two pictures with two different uh, lenses, two different uh, sensors from two different points of view, you just get a whole bunch of data upon which to build a great picture. And one of the masterpieces of the iPhone camera design is that uh, you don't, you're not, what, what you see on the screen later is not the picture that it took. It was a calculation, an estimation, right. uh, and an enhancement of several, several captures that it took to combine into the best picture possible. And we're not even talking about HDR. So I'm super excited about what they will do to simply make a better 12 megapixel image rather than what they could do with 3D. Although 3D would be, a, two, what you can do with two cameras just as a 3D capture device is pretty amazing. I mean, if you, if you think about putting those, those lenses, is at the two corners of the you know of a watch if you hold the when you hold the phone like this and you put them here and here you know like on either corner um you know i just think that the possibilities of what you can do with that is pretty profound and we do yeah. a lot with parallax and, and once you get that that much parallax um between viewability 3d generation of the you know content i don't know if you've light, seen lightro style refocusing all exactly of all of that and again and the further those get apart the more right. you can do because right. the more information yeah. you have and and um, if you look at we're just uh, about to get a camera that spins in a room and just basically builds a 3d model you know you know and it because it's got two lenses that are that are here and as it moves around it looks at the parallax and it just figures out you know Apparently, what it's looking at. optical zoom might also be possible with a dual lens mm -hmm. system well, they just want to make that's the cameras, holy like grail want... if you ask me of camera yeah that's the one achilles heel of camera phone photography is it's you can't zoom you can only zoom digitally if you had a real zoom that'd be very interesting. the bokeh leo you all want the bokeh yeah <laughs> ming chi kuo who is of course the analyst uh who often does uh, a good job of reporting from the supply chain i think that's probably his mm -hmm. uh his specialité sent out a note yesterday saying that apple would introduce not one but two variants of its next generation iphone plus the iPhone 7 Plus, one would, only one, but one would come with a new dual lens setup. So it's, I mean, I don't know how accurate this is. He's generally pretty good, but that's interesting that they might do a smaller one and then two bigger ones, one of which would have this fancy camera. Um, Sony is the uh, supplier, and uh, they have said, quote, for the next year, our so-called dual lens, dual camera platform will be launched by, we believe, some major smartphone players. This is Sony's CFO, and he said the real start, the takeoff of the smartphone with dual lens camera, will be in the year 2017. Yeah, could be if early Apple's 2017. Not, if Apple's not building it themselves, realize that they're going to be buying a component that right. Sony's then going to be offering to other people. So, right. once again, it's, it's not just the component; it, the idea of having two lenses. It's what does the Apple hardware do with the data that coming that's coming off of that two lens system? And they've already they've always shown that. Uh, they are really, really smart at turning that stuff into great pictures. It would make sense that they'd have uh, a, a, maybe a, a iPhone 7 with a single lens and then the 7 Plus would have dual lenses. I don't, to have two 7 Pluses seems a little odd. It depends also on what, like, how badly they want the technology and what the cost is. So if there is, right. if, if they have to do it at a significantly higher price, then it's nice to have something underneath that. So it's not like a two hundred dollar or three hundred dollar step up. Of course, uh, we yeah. know, we know, we would all buy it. <laughs> and 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 the thing is, when we th when we think about Sony's dual, uh, you know, dual lens system and how much Apple might want it and what they might think it's worth and all the technologies that Sony has, we should just remember that Sony's market cap is a little less than thirty five billion. <laughs> Oh, just buy Pocket them. Change. Pocket change. <laughs> I know, I know, like literally, like Apple. Check the couches. We, we would like to buy you for cash. That's interesting. That would kind of yeah. scare well, me because I'm such a fan of the Sony uh, pro, prosumer cameras. 
uh, and I, I don't know if Apple would be a good steward of this since they're trying to sell camera phones, right? And they yeah. tend to buy well, the people who can make the stuff. They don't necessarily need to buy the company that makes it. Right. Yeah. Sony not is not a good acquisition same. right now. I mean, it's struggling in, in so many of its divisions. Well, you streamline a lot of it. I mean, it's, it's what you really want from Sony is all the technology and yeah. pat patents and yeah. all the other things that yeah. they have sitting They're there. good at sensors, boy. They, really, and, yeah. they own the yeah. sensors right now. Yep. Yeah, see, and that's, that's why oftentimes when Apple buys a company, it scares me a little bit because, okay, great. So what breakthrough did they make that now is not going to be a, right. available to any other computer or any right. other phone that will only be available on this one kind of phone and will only be available on this one type of, of computer? Uh, All's fair in love and war. So if they if they got the checkbook out and the company wants to sell, that's, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, you think about what if there was only one company that had really cracked touchscreens? Uh, not literally, but you know, really solve the problems of multi-touch. But now there's I can, only I can found a company that can crack. Exactly, I can. Every company has several people who have cracked uh, touch screens. Um, but imagine if that were the exclusive property of Apple, and everybody needed seven years to figure out how to do any kind of a decent touch screen at all. We would not have the great environment that we have today of, of non iPhones that have touch screens. Uh, we've, we already saw that a little bit with uh, fingerprint uh, technology, where it took a couple of years for uh, uh, touch sensors, fingerprint sensors as good as the one uh, on the on the first iPhone with uh, with touch ID to arrive on Android and other phones because Apple bought the company that really had that locked down and, and doing well. Uh, so people would catch up. But it's like, doesn't everybody deserve to have the best components and the best technology? Uh, it's, I guess, it's not a problem. It's just something that just I, as an observer, thinks that I, w I, I would love these people to simply say, what if you just were to buy the good 10 cabin yacht with the profits you can make by selling the sensor to everybody as opposed to the 100 cabin yacht that you can use as the tender to your 1,000 cabin yacht that you would buy if you sold out to Apple? It's like uh, it's like in that show Billions, where the guy buys the uh, the pastry company. What was it called? Uh, because he says you've ruined the the recipe. And when I was growing up, I used to love these cakes. Yeah. And you're going to put the recipe back, even though it's going to cost you a lot more money. <laughs> I want my cakes. The, the interesting cakes. thing about yeah. this is that, like, there, in some cases, these are technologies that maybe somebody wouldn't have figured out, and they would never have come to market, or they would have taken years to come to market. And Apple gets them there sooner. And even though it takes two years for companies to catch up, maybe it would have taken five years if there wasn't one well-funded company behind it to get there in the beginning. And maybe we would never have those cakes back if the billionaire guy didn't didn't buy them. So I think like there's absolutely cases where Andy's right, where the technology uh, it belongs to Apple for a couple of years. But I think there's also cases where we get stuff early because one company, and it tends to be Apple because they're super focused, decides they want to put all the arrow in there, you know, all the wood behind that arrow and just ship it. Yeah. I, I love it when you have just different companies pursuing different points of view, and then Apple gets to take a look at what Google made, and Google gets to take a look at what Apple made, or not not by rummaging through waste baskets, uh, but by, <laughs> by by going to the store and buying an iPhone and, and using it, and saying, "Wow, that really is a good idea. We should make our software run a little bit like that, like that too." Or we had no, we thought that a fingerprint reader was a good idea. Now we know it's a great idea, so let's step it up. And we've seen lots of evidence that it happens pretty much in every direction. Yum time. <laughs> Do are you guys watching Billions? Watch it. It's on Showtime. Oh, I'm still finishing Ray Donovan. I can't. Oh, I love I, Ray Donovan. <laughs> I, I do love one Ray show Donovan. at a time, so I get to the end and I'm like, yeah, oh, finish Ray I, I Donovan because there's there's not new episodes for a while, and then you've got Billions, which is brand new, mm -hmm. with Damian yeah. Lewis and uh, Bar uh, Paul Giamatti and uh, and Yum Time. He, <laughs> Damian uh, Lewis plays the billionaire hedge fund manager, you know, who's like the king of the world. When I was a kid. I was a newspaper boy. We had no money, so I had a news newspaper delivery. <laughs> and I would save my money all week for my newspaper delivery. And at the end of the week, I would reward myself with a yum time cake. <laughs> <laughs> Is he running for president? Oh, it's, what are you guys up there, up north of the uh, 49th parallel? What do you guys think of this whole crazy stuff that's going on? No, again, uh, like we had the longest <laughs> election in history. It lasted for, I think, what, 60 or 70 <laughs> days and we were done. It, I, I thought your election was last year. I thought the Super Bowl was the election. Oh I can't believe God. you guys have the endurance. It's just this. beginning. I know. All right. Uh, error 53, Fury Mounts. And Walt <laughs> Mossberg says, Apple software sucks. <laughs> I've saved the worst for last. We're going to take a break and come back and talk about those short stories. Of course, we got our picks of the week, too. Andy Anakos here from the Chicago Sun-Times. Renee Ritchie from imore.com.
and Alex Lindsay from One Infinite Loop. <laughs> but he's, he's not working there. Ferrari he's behind him. Is that a Ferrari standing out you front? Out? Yeah, it looks like that. Uh, you know, yeah. you need yeah, to I, complete it. You just if you, you need a you need to, like a stern guy in a polo shirt with a white <laughs> black polo shirt with a white Apple logo on the and on a the radio chest. in his ear. Are you yeah, going to, driving uh, right at you? Um, <laughs> sir, can I, can I help you, sir? He, he, you just, <laughs> he just appeared out of nowhere, sir. I, mean, I don't know exactly what happened. I, I was love his ability and, to teleport. He just And then he disappeared, and then he came back. And, and then All right, during this commercial, life. Jason Cleanthus, I want you to work on the <laughs> thing, the teleport. You know, the little... <laughs> <laughs> I want the teleport sound, and I want him to kind of... Get, is that too much to ask? Probably is. Can I talk about my pillow? I slept so well last night. Oh, man. And it's thanks to Casper. I love you, Casper. We talk about Casper. They're an online retailer. Premium mattresses for a fraction of the cost. Made in the USA. <clears throat> Obsessively engineered. They bring together uh, latex and memory foam in such a way that it breathes. It's cool. It's subtly firm, but gives. It's hard to describe. It's a comfortable mattress with just the right sink and bounce. And it's open cell, but no springs, but it's open cell design just keeps you cool. I just love the Casper it's mattress. Fantastic. It is. And you can try it. Uh, I, they know, well, we don't have showrooms. I think they have showrooms in a few places, but we don't have showrooms. Most people are going to buy it. They're going to say, well, I want to sleep on it first. So what they say is buy it. You've got 100 days to return it at no cost to you. If, uh, if you don't like it, we'll come and get it. We'll give you every penny back. Here's our Casper mattress arriving. It's in a very co surprisingly compact box. We got the queen size, and you you open it up, and it goes, <laughs> and it's suddenly huge. Oh, is it memory foam? Uh, it's got memory foam and latex. It's a, I you know what? If you go to the website, you can actually see how it's constructed. Um, I don't. There's things I don't like about memory foam, and they really solve those problems because you know, memory foam. Um, you know, uh, it, when it's cold, it gets firm and it's kind of, and it, it maybe doesn't breathe very well. So they fixed this all. And, and it, it also typically stops you from, uh, it, because you sink in so much like a waterbed, your body has to tense up to hold it in shape. And that keeps you tense all night. Right. Where this has the other type of foam. So you relax, you sink in, and then the other foam supports, supports you. So you, you get like the best of both worlds. Yeah, you can see in this video that I'm well supported, but it's comfy. Oh, I love it. And now we just got some Casper pillows. Customers who uh, who buy Casper mattresses are very happy. It's got a 4.6 out of 5 star review rating. Free delivery. Painless returns within a 100-day period. And the pillows they are also dual layer. Uh, they're big. They're like body pillows, which is nice. And they they are very... They adapt to you through... The, I've never had such a good pillow. I, I'm so happy. So here's the deal. Go to Casper.com, C-A-S-P-E-R.com slash MacBreak. And if you use the promo code MacBreak, you're going to save 50 bucks uh, off any mattress at Casper.com slash MacBreak. Just use the promo code MacBreak. Ter terms and conditions apply, but you can see uh, what they are at Casper.com slash terms if you want to read up. If, you, if, you, if you're the type of person who likes to read the fine print. Casper.com slash MacBreak. Just the nicest mattress you've ever slept on. You're going to love it. You have one, Renee? I didn't know that. Yeah, you had. it's the best mattress I've ever had. I've had it for about a year. I didn't maybe. know that. Yeah, it's fantastic. And I've I've had a lot of injuries and been told by a lot of physiotherapists well, how to sleep and, and, and how to do it properly. And this just, it does it all for me. I can just really lie there nice. and relax. Georgia yeah, Dow approved. Can we say it's Georgia Dow approved? She was jumping on them. Her and Serenity were jumping on them at CES. They had a, they had a great time. And I think Serenity <laughs> just got the pillows too. So I have to, I have to up my game. I love the pillows. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tripod in our chat room says, I love mine. I also love it that it doesn't stink for three months as it airs out. It smells fresh. This is true. I don't know what they're yeah. doing, but it doesn't smell right. like rubber or anything. It's it's a beautiful, fresh mattress right out of the box. I love it. I, I just love the, 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 the observation that there is something, some sort of genetic defect in all of us that even something as simple as sleeping, like we can even turn that into, let's use a high technology mattress. We can sl sleep more efficiently. And now I'm using like apps to make sure I get a good score at night that I can then put onto a chart. It's like even the sleep is supposed to be like the easiest thing in the world, but we're still figuring out there must be a way through numbers and science technology. We can make sleep even better. 
I only notice the technology if I go out camping or something, and then I realize beds have gotten really good. And this, <laughs> yeah. this yeah. ground is really hard. <laughs> that's a, oh that's, God, that's like that. actually, you know what? That I love that. I love that general issue. Like when you when you haven't been paying attention to a technology for ten years, and that includes mattresses. Like you I've, you buy a new mattress like every what eight to ten years, and then suddenly the, like the third mattress you buy, it's not just box spring okay and now here's the thing on top of it now there's oh my god there's like they now they're making mattresses out of this thing now this like now i can actually like be soft and comfortable but yet have firm support i know it's uh, uh, innovative it's it's just, it's just like with the, with my bicycle thing. I haven't bought a bicycle in twenty years. I know. And I'm like, oh my I know. god! It's like it it doesn't need an engine because it's so easy to drive. You now. know they have smartphones now that don't have physical keyboards. It's mind boggling. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. Crazy talk. I was when, when in um, just outside of Nairobi, uh, uh, Kenya, they have a place called Carnivore, which is basically a Brazilian steakhouse, except that they're serving you know wildebeest and alligator and, and all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> and um, after sampling that, I, I realized that after 10,000 years of innovation, there are certain animals that we have um, honed to be good to eat and certain ones that we... Oh, are, yeah. yeah. You, know, you, go, you go to carnivore once. It's not yeah. something you, you go I remember for that date, from as like, a kid, we get biltong, like ostrich and hip, uh, like all different kinds of animals we made into basically like beef jerky, but it was called biltong. Biltong is so it good. Yeah. It's the best. It's like, yeah. You know, you can order it in Southern California. Yeah, see, we can we can always expand our domain. Like you, you just want to like send a, a a a heads up memo to like groundhogs and and raccoons saying, <laughs> bad news. We have a new technique. We new digital cooking technique that makes even your meat incredibly succulent and flavorful and tasty. So <laughs> we've enjoy, learned how to enjoy sous vide a raccoon. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's take a break. When we oh, we did take a break. Yeah, we did. <laughs> that was the ad. Let's take another. Break. That, I thought we were just talking we just about mattresses. We, we have the scandals, just, Leo. We're up we, on scandals we, we now. Went, we went from the mattress to the uh, I do, I to do, the rat hole. Yeah. Now often, we're often, back. oftentimes, oftentimes we have such cool uh, sponsors that it's just a topic we want to talk about. Like, I know, isn't that awesome? <laughs> and you get program length commercials. <laughs> Error 53. Got to go home and have a nice Budweiser after this, I think. <laughs> what was that all about? Beer, Holy cow. That's super interesting because it's it's like a multi-stage thing. A long time ago when the iPhone 5, well, you know, iPhone 5S came out, years and years ago, uh, Apple launched uh, Touch ID. And when third-party repair shops started looking at them, they found out that if they swapped the sensor, it no longer worked. And that's because there's a secure hardware handshake that happens to lock each sensor with the device. That way, if you know, like some foreign intelligence service steals your phone, and they can't just swap in and, a touch and ID by sensor. the way that would be fine yeah that's so yeah all of that so that's been happening for a long time so touch id sensors have been uniquely paired with iphones since they were introduced and all that is to maintain the security of the device because you don't want your data to fall into and if apple too. repairs it they can re rebind it right yeah, and the nice thing is that Apple repairs it and the rebinding doesn't work because sometimes it doesn't. They can just give you a new iPhone right. because that's, they, that's what they do there. Um, a couple of things have happened since then. One is that with third-party shops, that's not true. If something goes wrong and even if they're repairing the screen or something else and there's, there's a, a problem with the authentication system, it could still not work. What's new is with iOS 9, it's now throwing up an error, error 53, which uh, like people are calling it breaking the phone, but basically the phone detects that the 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 hardware security is no longer um, true. Like the state of it has changed, and it can't verify that that phone is secure anymore. And then there's two schools of thought on what should happen. Some people think you should fail safe and just you know turn off whatever is not working, but still provide access to everything else. And some people believe you should fail secure, and that is I can no longer trust this. Therefore, I'm locking it down, and no one's going to get anything out of it. Uh, and that's a huge debate. There's a lot of stuff about like whether Apple should warn people before going to third party uh, repair places, but that's tricky. Do you put a warning on every launch screen? Oh, by the way, this is iCloud. More this is than Siri. tricky, they could get an antitrust lawsuit. Well, so it's not it's not geared for that, but I just mean like some people were saying warn people not to go to third party repair shops and yeah. they could get sued. But also as an interface issue from a design point of view, do you alert them when they first buy the phone? Do you put it in fine print on the bottom of the pamphlet that comes with it that nobody sees? Like that that's all very unworkable. So like this is something that Apple has to fix. They have to figure out why in some cases people are insisting it's a false positive. It's hard to say for sure. But giving someone error 53, no matter what the condition is, just it's not a human way to deal with things. You should need to tell yeah. people like this: the the phone is in an untrusted state. Please contact Apple or or something but that a human being so can relate Samsung to. Samsung has the similar problem. stuff for the Knox security, and if the Knox security is violated, then Samsung Pay stops working, and some you know movie 
things stop working because the Hollywood says, oh, you could be pirating. But the phone doesn't brick. Yeah, and they didn't used to either. This is something new. And it, Breaking it seems well like could extreme. A, you think it might be an error. I think it's yeah. I think it's not something intentional because the way they're reacting to it, it's like not not something that they would have expected to happen. Okay, okay. That's, that's obviously the that's obviously the wrong answer. So it's it's not just that people are losing access to their phones, which is bad enough, but also you got photos that might not have been backed up. You got other data that is kind of precious to you, and the idea that. Anytime a piece of technology says, yes, your photos here, they're fine, but I'm not going to let you have them. That's that's a bad response. Yeah. I, I would, I would and there I is, like I think there's already was... a class action lawsuit. I mean, that's I mean, this is new. But oh, wow. uh, well, yeah, it's hard to believe this is intentional because there's so many laws like the Federal Trade Commission. There's European laws that govern this very strictly. Right. So it's almost impossible to imagine a world where this was the intended consequence of that. The story but... broke with The Guardian. The Guardian had a reporter who was in Macedonia. Covering the refugee crisis, his phone broke. He brought it. There's no Apple store to go to, no, no authorized repair depot in Macedonia, apparently. So he brought it to a third party. They fixed the screen. And when they fixed the screen, I guess, is this right, Renee? You're going to get a new fingerprint reader as well. And it, it's not always the case. And sometimes it's just an error, like a cable gets gets compromised while they're doing the screen repair. But but uh, as a result, now it worked fine. But then when he put iOS 9 on it, and this would even happen if you updated it. Uh, it bricked and it stopped working and it gave him the error 53. It is, and he had to buy a new phone. Yeah, and that's where it sounds like the big problem is. Because, again, it was working fine. This has been happening since iOS, sorry, since iPhone 5S. And it's just the Touch ID stops working, which is a That's reasonable. Yeah, or Apple yes. Pay. And Apple Pay could stop working. That's Yeah, anything that requires reasonable. the hardware, the authentication system in the secure enclave should just right. absolutely stop working. And then, you know, you put in your passcode. Yeah, it's a little bit of pain in the butt, but, you know, like that, they, it can't be trusted. Um, but the error 50, like, again, it doesn't sound like something human because it's not... Please take this to an Apple store. It's this binary code that's being generated off the off the device. Well, it's it's yeah. I mean, it, I don't know if there was ever like a walkthrough when they decided that if this happens, then this is what we're going to do to lock people out. It's also possible. It's possible that it's a it's a bug. It's also possible that it's just simply they can't they couldn't figure out how uh, at the at the OS level at the, excuse me at that extremely low level they can't figure out how to create an exception for the overall system security integrity check has failed. Do we then decide we have a no slash no go for certain features, but uh, but other features are okay, and they just simply decided that it wasn't a big enough problem to solve it right away, given the other things that were certainly on their plate. Um, but uh, I think it, it also, it's it's, a, it's the reaction. I think is a good a good illustration of the perception that people have of these companies. If if honestly, if, if HTC or Samsung had this problem, everybody would, it would not be a controversy because everyone would say, oh yeah, see, they just did this in a half-assed way and they didn't really think it's a fault, it's a bug, it's just not made right. With Apple, you believe that their engineering is, ex is always excellent and you also believe that at some point if someone asked the question, are we going to be helpful to people who got their phones fixed by someone that doesn't work for Apple, <laughs> that maybe it's there was a discussion and the answer was no well, well we're going to make people always have their phones fixed at apple if they don't get them fixed at apple well we'll give them reasons to want to have them fixed well, at apple and, i don't think that i don't think that happened but that's that's perception and i don't think this necessarily happened either but i i wonder if there was an exploit that they saw happening that they decided maybe. to close uh, a loop you know like there was something that they yeah. saw that, that they saw instances of and their choice was we're going to close it and then and then talk about it but we want to close it first so, so, so that the folks hoping to take advantage of it don't get to um but the uh but yeah i i, I don't know that that's the case at all the key but, thing um, for me is that it's happening curious. at apple repair stores too like when apple stores are fixing it they're getting that error and they're just swapping out yeah. the phone and that's not something that apple wants to do if they don't have to you know that's a huge increase in cost for them and then to add insults well we'll see what we'll cover this by the way uh and if apple does announce a fix or whatever i i think you, that's actually credible renee that that this isn't what they intended uh, I, I, because I think the lawsuits are going to fly fast and furious. Well, I mean, like the external and internal consequences of doing this intentionally are super yeah. huge, and Apple's not a dumb <laughs> not company. Not to so. mention <laughs> the governmental issues about, yeah. uh, you know, kind of anti-competitive behavior. Ter uh, terrible press. I mean, yeah. like there's, just, there's no upside in doing this yeah. intentionally. Yeah, okay. And it could also be, and I wouldn't, you know, I see this now a lot, and I, I think that this is uh, probably more common than not, Uh companies that are engineering driven and Google and Apple are engine well Apple may be more marketing driven but there's still a lot of engineers and engineers may think a little differently they may say no no the logic is that this shouldn't work because it's not secure you don't want it to work 
and and not realize that the the PR hit that they're going to take and the and the legal I mean, consequences. And, and some some of these companies are very uh, um, paranoid about <laughs> hardware being compromised. You know, uh, I know some companies that have a policy that if TSA takes your computer to look at it, leave it. Right. Like like literally, right. you, you can't you can't right. take it back to the company. Like you just leave, just give it to them, and you're not you're you know you're not you don't want it back. And and they they kind of take their uh, computers up. Uh, we received no compensation from Budweiser for Alex Lindsay's appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Red Bull, though, paying us yep. big bucks. Yeah, you know it's 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 funny. I, there's a, I, I can't. I, I agreed not to identify the source, but I can use the story. Um, there's a there's a company that uh, issues Chromebooks to uh, a lot a lot of their comp lot of their uh, employees who are traveling to certain parts of the world, and the understanding is that uh, we're going to give you a brand new one. Uh, when you leave, when you are at the site, we want before you leave the site, though, we want you to a stomp on it. So it's all broken up to pieces. Take a photo of the pieces and then leave then throw out the pieces and we will get you a new laptop when you get home. It's that it's that serious about <laughs> let's not trust it, it, It's not just a TSA. It's uh, at some point you probably left this locked in a hotel safe and a hotel safe can be open with a high energy magnet and a sock. Uh, and so we're not going to trust that no one has had access to that data or had access to those uh, uh, to those codes. So it's interesting. Uh, and a, a little more trouble in paradise. Walt Mossberg, who in the past has been a big Apple fan, although, I, you know, I think Walt sometimes gets a bad rap as being uncritical of Apple. He's been critical from time to time. Mm -hmm. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, fam the, the famous story about when the remember the famous story about uh, Steve Jobs huge huge tantrum saying that Walt Mossberg was what we used to think of him he's he's one of our friends and even he says our products suck what's wrong with you people <laughs> uh, this is writing in the Verge Mossberg's column Apple's apps need work complexity feature gaps and bugs have crept in and he started a conversation which frankly is a continuation of a conversation we've had perhaps less publicly mm -hmm. uh, on the show we we often say uh that itunes <laughs> please stop the insanity walt says i dread launching itunes he says uh over the last couple of years i've noticed a gradual degradation in the quality and reliability of apple's core apps on both the mobile ios operating system and its mac os 10 it's almost as if the tech giant has taken its eye off the ball when it comes to these core software products while it pursues new big dreams and it's like smartwatches and uh, cars. And he particularly singles out iTunes for the desktop. He says, now I dread opening the thing. Apple Mail. I think part of Apple Mail's problems don't come from Apple, but from a difficulty working with Gmail. And since so many yep. people use Gmail, and by the way, he points this out. What's the uh, delay? I don't quite understand the delay with why Apple Mail is so delayed with Gmail. So if you're on a web, especially if you if you have the web browser open, you'll realize that you're getting your mail on the web browser about oftentimes 15 minutes before you get it on your Google's IMAP implementation is eccentric. Is a it's nice. It's not. It's it. not. It's not standard. No. Okay. Um, although it's not so non-standard that Apple can't figure it out. I don't. I don't. I actually like Apple Mail, but. Uh, I do agree with him that photos is one big ball of junk. Um, I have had so much yeah. trouble with photos, importing libraries, keep maintaining libraries. My get libraries get corrupted. I hear from people a lot on the radio show uh, who can't. You know, uh, one woman called me last week. She said uh, I press the edit button in photos, and the, I get a black picture. That's it. Uh, and uh, she's she's called Apple and talked to the geniuses and has had no satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Um, he also mentions, as we all know, that Apple and services don't seem to go together. iCloud has not been, uh, uh, despite huge attempts by Apple to make it work, has not been very successful. Um, but this is, it, I guess my first observation was, is is this something new? I mean, no. 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 Like I, I was the first time this happened when Marco Armand was talking about it last year. You know, kudos to Marco for a really good article on it, the functional high ground. I went back because you know, iMores got forums going back five years. Apple discussion boards go back. 
you know, 10, 15 years. Um, and it's sort of like the human condition. And Georgia can explain this better than me. But any pain you had in the past sort of goes away. You forget about it. It becomes abstract. Yes. Any annoyance or pain you have now is super, super bad. So we'll complain about Apple design now and we'll forget about green felt and, and brush metal. And we'll complain about Apple software bugs now and we'll forget about things like mobile me and uh, app, core audio, which has always been, you know, sort of problematic. So that, that's one of the things. The other thing is that Apple software from the outside, it looks like one thing, but Apple's got many different software teams. There's the engineering team under Craig Federici, and they ship a lot of apps that a lot of people really love. Uh, and there's the software teams that make iTunes, completely different organization that makes a music app, completely different organization that makes iWork and iLife, completely different organization. And you might, like, those teams may not always be doing sort of the same kind of work. So if you're saying Apple's doing Project A, like the watch or something, totally different team doing this. They could be doing bad work regardless of Apple, whether Apple's making watches, um, or cars or anything. And, and the bigger issue is sort of they've given these apps impossible jobs. Like iTunes job right now is ridiculous. It's got to be absolutely portable to Windows, sync legacy iPods, manage Apple Music, uh, manage iTunes DRM for video and all these other things. And it, you, you just can't put all that in one app. But when Apple does what they usually do, which is to be super opinionated, burn things down and make a new app, You've got to make tough choices. Do you abandon Windows and just put that in the cloud? Do you abandon iPods, which they're still selling, by the way? Do you move Apple Music somewhere else? And then people like Jim who have massive libraries complain that they have to use two apps now to do, to do basically one job. And you have the same problem on Apple Music. Like rumor has it, it was a super simple app. And then people are like, well, I want this feature. I want playlists. Plus I want stations. Plus I want the up next queue. I want to be able to download music, have it in the cloud, have it streaming, have it uh, you know, in a remembered state. Um, and these apps are sort of set up to fail. There's no right answer for this. Uh, and you, in the end, they're going to have to choose. And a lot of people are going to be super upset. But that's sort of Apple's lot in throw away the floppy disk life. Yeah. But, but they, it's, let's it not be cool. apologists for Apple either. I mean, they're the company that says no, they it didn't just make the works. Choice. And they all had a that. hard choice and they refused. To, they punted the choice. They just yeah. kept adding more and more stuff to it. Yeah. yeah. Also, one of the tidbits that have been coming out of that town hall meeting is that Tim Cook was hinting at bringing more Apple services to other platforms uh, and implied uh, that one of those platforms would be uh, would be Android. Did he did he actually call out uh, Apple Music on Android as one example? Uh, I think that was a, I, I, so, I, yeah. I believe I read that. Yeah, that he, he yeah. talked about that specifically. But yeah, I mean, so they got they got a lot in their plate. But I mean, yeah, Renee is absolutely right. I mean, we've been um, it's it's not it, it's nothing new. They've got a lot. There are things that I feel as though there are things that Apple is is seriously, passionately fascinated with and other things they do because it's part of their job as being Apple and creating uh, support for all of their products. Just like in all of our jobs, I love I love writing. I like uh, I like uh, the video stuff. I love podcasting. I hate filing invoices. I hate having to f have keep up with my inbox, but I have to do that because that's part of the business that I'm in. And I feel as though software apps and services are part of the job that Apple is in that they have to do because they it lets them to make and design cool things like iPods and iPads uh, and hang out with you too. Uh, and so uh, it's going to take a while for them to really have the, have that uh, come to Jesus moment. If you uh, if you modern if you a, a, a if you if I can apologize for uh, phrasing the name name of the deity, uh, but uh, it's there's going to have to be a time where they're going to have to back off from iTunes. They're going to have to say we, we've got we are we own the trademark for iSync. Let's bring it back. Let's have a tool it's, that is just it's challenging perfectly home for syncing though because you can't As, throw money at a computer. A programming problem. You can't just hire more programmers. That's it's the Windows problem. Well, you, you have, have to you have to bring millions of users. Well, and, well, and you, you're, you you're kind of, also going to no, have you, you kind of have to you kind of have to bring people in that are going to be passionate about fixing iTunes. I mean, it's it's clear that the for instance, let's let's talk about something less controversial like mail. It has never been something that people like. It's been something that people use because it's in, it's pre-installed on everything. Uh, it's the only one that's hardwired in iOS, so it's basically has favored nation status. No one has ever said that this is a really great mail client. If uh, they've had this mail client for 10 years and it's still at the state that it is right now, it's never going to get any better until they hire someone in who who is who absolutely loves mail clients. And you give them enough power to simply say, we are going to keep, we're going to keep this block of code and this library, and we're going to keep the name mail.app and, well, and maybe the icon, but that's it. We're going to retool this from scratch. 
But then, but then, you know, when when Apple retools something from scratch, like Final Cut, you know, they, you know, people people like lose just lose their, their minds, minds over being upset. Where you know, Final Cut Seven, if you compare it to Final Cut Ten, is crap. I mean, Final Cut Seven was yep. like just painful to use on so many levels, and we we dealt with it because it was better than the other options, but it wasn't a great um, you know editing app. And, and, you know, Final Cut, Final Cut 10 was, uh, we're going to rethink this. We're going to completely rethink it. We're going to experiment first with iMovie with this new idea. And if it works, then we're going to move it to Final Cut 10. And, you know, and so then they rethought it and reorganized it and really thought outside the box and produced, in my opinion, you know, a, a great editing package. And, you know, and everyone's up in arms. So, I, you know, I think that in some ways they're going to be in, a, you know, a lot of us complain about iTunes, um, you know, and, or don't use it at all. Um, and, uh, you know, because I don't interact with iTunes that often. I mean, I just, you know, I have to admit that, you know, my number one interaction now is I just tell Siri what I want, want yeah. to hear. You know, like, like that's the most magical part about Apple Music is just that you're just walking around and just, I feel like listening to this song. Hey, Siri, you know, like, oops, I just... The only mouth. thing I do too is exactly my use case. <laughs> Very different than Jim's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just it's just like this incredible, uh, you know, um, uh, incredible experience there. And I don't, you know, so iTunes I think also is I don't know how many people interact with it that often because I don't interact with it at all. And so you know, I don't think about it that much. I also don't I don't care about pages because I don't interact with it at all. <laughs> but you know what's telling no, is how many of us don't use Apple's core applications. Uh, well, uh, on our iPhones, like we've moved them into a folder. Some oh, yeah. call it junk. I have. I still use all the Apple apps. So if you a, use Apple's mail, iOS mail app yeah, as your absolutely. chief mail. I like the unif So it's, it's again, it's use cases. I like the unified inbox because I have a personal account and a work account, and I only want to check one well, inbox. You can get that on third party apps. I mean, I, they were never as good, and I, they just okay. I didn't like some of them. Always wanted my credentials, and they've gotten over that now. But I just none of them have been compelling enough to make me switch. Prefer, For a while, Google Maps was, but I went back. Right. Yeah, I certainly prefer. In fact, often it's the Google app, Google Photos. I prefer over Apple's Photos, uh, Google's Calendar. Even I prefer. Although I wish I could get it. The, so the watch, as far as I can tell, doesn't have a complication for third party uh, or Google's Calendar anyway. Maybe that's Google's problem though. They, they can make write, it. Yeah, they could write a complication. Okay, because I need a calendar complication that goes with that calendar. Fantastical is a really good com uh, com oh, Maybe I'll use Fantastical instead, yeah. I, I really like Google Calendar. It's just kind of standardized on the, all of my stuff. But but Renee may be a, a, an outlier because I'm pretty sure most people end up replacing well, I mean, so a this, lot of the Apple apps on their iPhone with... Uh, my understanding is that that's not... It's it's not the case, but not for an apparent reason. It's just that most... Like, the vast majority of people are just mainstream users and they buy something and they use the they default. Use it's super it hard yeah. to get anyone to change settings or to get them to change apps. It requires a significant sort of action to get them to do that. Right. So in the tech sphere, absolutely. Like, I think most technology people use, like, Apple hardware with Google services, uh, sometimes Microsoft services, too. But an average person who just goes and buys an iPhone, I'll, I believe the numbers are still the majority just never change anything right well, my, my 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 dad i think he's got four extra apps beyond what shipped with the <laughs> the iphone and the, those four i downloaded for him i was like you right. really <laughs> want to have netflix on here and you really want to have this you know and, and i but i didn't go crazy with it and uh but he you know but you know he, he likes the apps that he has he doesn't really think about downloading more okay i stand corrected no, no, you're in our sphere, in our bubble. But, absolutely, people change that stuff. Uh, no, I have a folder that's just called Legacy, and that's just all <laughs> the apps that I don't use. I'm just like, okay, yeah. put them in there. I can't get rid of them. So. No, it, it's true. Most users, it's the tyranny of the default. They don't, they don't, yeah. they're not going to change anything. Yeah. Um, and I, you I just, know, you're going to use Safari because it's integrated in. You can't, you know. But, you, and I also think that's going to be that's going to be Apple's secret with Apple Music is that is that it is so seamlessly tied into the into the ecosystem and it's so right. you know it's just there and again as soon as you realize that it's just it is so seamless just to ask for a song and it just it just starts playing and um, you know uh, other than trying to persuade Siri to play Pearl Jam's Alive is you have to be very specific and <laughs> talk in a very specific way because there's Pearl like Jam I guess there's a lot is no of, longer yeah. alive. No, yeah, but, it's just like. But that's kind of, that's kind of like that's kind of no way to go through life. I mean, I I was when I, when we were I was thinking about this after the this became the another news story last week, and thinking let me think of all the different apps uh, and services that Apple makes. How many of them do I really love? That if there were a million apps like this, I would still use this. It comes down to Keynote. Uh, and Notes, although I don't use Notes because it's uh, not platform independent. And that's kind of it. For me, I, and I would say not, I mean, for me, 
vinyl cut in numbers. I would I would add to that. Um, you know, I would I numbers really numbers for really charting, it. but I yeah you know. numbers what? I'm sorry, no uh, 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 numbers. Uh, I use numbers for charting, but I actually pr it's personal preference. I mean, I, I, I like the ubiquity of uh, Google Docs. No, I like uh, the ubiquity of Google Docs, but man, so what I, a lot of times what I do is I actually build the, the, the thing in numbers because I just don't have the patience to deal with Google Docs. You know, so I build it all out, then I export it as X XLS and then I import it into Google Docs because okay. and then I can then I can add stuff to it. I like that everybody can add something to my Google Doc or whatever. But when I actually, you know, want to do something quickly and actually get something put together, um, you know, it doesn't do, you know, numbers is not doesn't do heavy calculations you know it's you know i wouldn't try to run you know a fortune 500 company doing that but for most of the stuff that i need to do budgets and everything else it's just so yeah. fast and and i don't have to deal with i'm not i'm not um contained in the sheet structure i can just make you know charts and you know make make uh, little sections yeah. that are what i want and have white space and you know it's such a great you know for for 90 percent of the people <laughs> that need to do that it's it's a much better it. solution is, yeah. you know, go back to the problem with the software though i mean like the uh, and this again is this is not an apology it's sort of explaining why it's like this and when you understand why it's like that you can start to decide what would what would i do in this situation is that apple's culture is its greatest strength and its greatest weakness and this culture is now scaling at an unbelievable rate and it's really hard to maintain these small teams and to give them huge workloads like some people will say take all the apps give them all to craig federici's team let him at it but you know that team's already got impossible jobs it's got to ship ios and os 10 every year and it's, it's unclear how how big you could scale that organization without them having problems and then you have the culture where like there's radar and there's a lot of program managers but is there enough qa for all these resources uh and and you look at any one of these and you say well it's, it's moving really fast. It's super big, using a lot of devices. What part of this do you fix? And I think it, it has to come to a point where, and there's rumors it's already happening, that uh, famously Apple was, tra was tracking crashers and they believed that they were doing better software than ever because it was crashing less often. And people were saying, well, no, crashing is sort of a pain, but there's all these other things that it's doing that makes my life miserable every day that is short of a crash. And they yeah, weren't really measuring crash, it. crash, it just sucks. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot of the apps are perfectly stable. They're more stable than they've ever been. Apple's super proud about that. But right. wait a minute, like it, it's respringing or it's doing this. Uh, and that just prob probably was. And the way that, because that wasn't measured, Apple has a system of ranking for bugs. And it's like P1, P2, P3. And when you want to ship, it's like the P1s, the game changers, the, the game stoppers, the crashers that you fix and you don't have enough time. Even if you're, like, because these engineers are all great. They're craftspeople. They want to make terrific software. But they don't have the time to go and fix these little annoyances that really, really add up. And rumor has it that Apple is, is sort of giving them that time now, that they're understanding that if you have sufficient quantities of these sorts of bugs, you ruin the experience as much or if more maybe than if the app crashes. And sort of giving them what they want to do anyway. These engineers want to fix these things. They just need the time to do it. Uh, and that hopefully will be part of their process in making this stuff better. Okay. I mean, if you've watched this show for any length of time, you know we've. this is not new, a new, new conversation. Going back even before Marco wrote about oh, it. Oh, for sure. Years. We've been talking. Yeah, we've been talking. No, I just, uh, iTunes is definitely at a crisis point, though. That's the one. If, they, if they're going to make one thing a priority, they got to fix iTunes because... I've, I'm now at the point with iTunes that I have rearranged how I deal with music and video so that I can use iTunes as little as possible. That's not a that's not an endorsement of iTunes. Does uh, uninstalling Facebook save battery life on your iPhone? According to I did it. I did it for I, I, I think it saves a lot of time and <laughs> it saves time. Batteries because you're not on it. It doesn't all. suck your brain yeah. dry uh, anyway. <laughs> but this is Samuel Gibbs writing for the Guardian, and he says 15 percent. Or even more, he says up to 20% of the iPhone's battery. Actually, this was uh, on Android. Yeah, I think they're linking to Android Central because yeah. like Russell, one of my colleagues. Yeah, Russell, Russell Holly removed it. Yeah. And in fact, I did the same thing. I, th I use the Mentions app because I'm a verified Facebook user. I don't think it drains as much battery. Um, if but, you pull up the battery usage monitor, like you can, anyone you can, can go tell, to, right? yeah, and you see everything, like it'll say uh, Twitter, uh, 10 minutes on screen, two minutes in the background, Safari, 10 minutes on screen, right. two minutes in the background, Facebook, 10 minutes on screen, four and a half hours on background. So yeah. is that, a, so that's a, so that's a sufficient way to figure this out is just go to the battery settings. And look yeah. at what's using up the battery. And so, Leo, if you tap on like uh, the little clock face on the right, yeah, uh, yeah tap on that, and it'll oh, tell you on screen that. versus background. Yeah. Yeah. So Mentions uses 7%, 50 minutes, seven, 4 minutes on screen, 47 in background. So a lot of background time is one of the things that's bad, right? Yes. For instance, well, yeah. 
But it doesn't. But Audible spent 3.3 hours in the background. I guess I listen to a lot of Audible books. So that's fine. If you're actually doing it's only something, 7%. you know it. Right. Like if right. you're listening exactly. to audio, that is a that is a legitimate use of background processes. Right. You're getting something out of that. Facebook needs to be on screen for you to get anything out of it. Right. And four hours is not an acceptable amount of time. Turn, turn off uh, background downloading, maybe and things like uh, things like that. Sometimes, but then they had that problem where they were enabling. They were. I, the rumor has it they were misusing the audio API to sort of stay alive if people were uh, turning off the background. On, on this iPhone six, which gets great battery life, the home and the lock screen are eight nineteen percent of the. Yeah. Uh, battery life, but there's nothing I can I can't turn that off. Obviously, yeah. That, that like Renee, like that, that's the stuff that I find super offensive. Where if you're just being inefficient, that's one thing. But you have these things where uh, the uh, Apple and other and Google as well take certain pains to make sure that any any app that's be that's idle gets. Uh, minimized and doesn't get to hog CPU resources. So when you add code to say, we're going to play an audio file of a tone that no human can hear <laughs> because the OS will not stop an audio, uh, an audio playing app. That's you, you just, you just, this is a, this is a family show, but you, you, you're, you're a colossal, <laughs> you're, you're, you're just, you, you've just skidded into jerk behavior. Let's <laughs> I, say I am and miffed. This is, this is why that's, that's just ungentlemanly conduct. I, this, this is why I don't have, Facebook apps on any of my devices at all. Yeah. Because I just, I, I believe Facebook to be exactly the sort of company that would do something like that. And darn if they aren't. Yeah. No, and it's the same thing Leo mentioned earlier. Like, again, not apologizing for Facebook, but they have a lot of incredibly awesome engineers who sometimes get an idea, like maybe like the security team did with Error 53, and they, they, they implement it before thinking about the consequences of implementing it. And then, like, it causes a lot of bad press, and they have to roll it back, and it's bad for I everybody. feel a little bad because uh, I recommended a program uh, called Airmail, which I've used on the uh, Apple desktop uh, and really like. And uh, I recommend it as the most powerful iOS, uh, iPhone uh, mail app I've ever seen uh, on uh, yesterday on iOS Today. And it really has so many settings and features, and I really like it. It's, it's a power tool, but yet very easy to use. However, I got home, I have 23% left of my battery for the first time ever. And I realized, oh, AirMail's just been eat hogging the battery like uh, crazy. One so. of the worst things is like, if you ever have a mail account that's got an error, like you forgot to pay your Google accounts bill or they can't reach the server, it, it often will just chug away and drain battery because the radio is just trying to connect and, yeah. and get your mail over and over again. But that's a good tip that look at the battery. That's something new in iOS 9, right? Yeah, so it, well, it got better in iOS 8. It was sort of like the battery shaming that they launched in Mac yeah, came to uh, right. the iPhone. And what they did now with, with breaking it down is it makes it easier to understand because people would see Twitter on top or TweetBot and think, oh, it's a battery hog, not realizing they spent four hours in it today. Right. Uh, so you, you want to compare on screen to background. And unless it is streaming audio, streaming directions or um, like Audible, voice over IP. Yeah. yeah your background should never exceed your four, your foreground. Certainly not by a factor of three, four, five, ten. Hmm. That's good. Um, and maybe because I had just installed it, that maybe it was maybe you're, somebody's saying, oh, it's probably just because it downloaded a lot the first time. Your entire, yeah. Your startup and that it will be better from now on. Uh, they had had some problems early on. I use Airmail on the desktop and really like it. So uh, they had had some problems early on and uh, they, they said in the update that they had fixed many of the battery issues. So. That's something a developer can do, right? They don't don't try to stick around in the background. Don't don't try to wake the phone up. Yeah, they have a lot yeah, of control I've, over that kind of stuff. I don't I I don't want to make a moral judgment. I, I I but I have to say that this is the same sort of stuff that uh, that uh, uh, web marketers use to say, well, let's see, the user has explicitly told us by by turning on this setting that they don't want to see pop-up ads. We're going to find a way to get around that because that's inconvenient for us. Right. So if you're, if you're developing an app for a platform that says, we are going to make sure that you can't stay in the background if you have nothing to do, we're going to find a way to get around that. That is jerk behavior. And I don't think that if a developer that has decided to, or excuse me, that's agreed to implement this, is agreeing to be a jerk. They're not just simply finding an efficient solution to a problem. They're right. just simply saying, there is a door that is locked, but we're going to break the window and go through that instead. That doesn't mean you solve the problem of the door. You're still breaking into a house, which is still something you shouldn't be doing. Fair point. All right. Back of the book coming up. Your tips of the week, your picks of the week. But first, a word from dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Hungry. I'm sorry. See, see if you if you took if you took that, those antacids two hours beforehand, you wouldn't be getting that, those words from dinner <laughs> hours later. 
For me, Blue Apron is dinner. Uh, it's what's for dinner. Blue Apron is so cool. It uh, it doesn't cook your dinner for you. I don't want prepared meals. I have, I've tried that, and a lot of times that's just not the right way to go. They're often frozen. I like to cook them. I like to cook. But the problem is, especially if you have a long work day, shopping, meal planning, thinking ahead, all of that I'm very poor at. So I love it when I get home and the Blue Apron box is on my doorstep. Beautiful. Every rest, every box has three, for me, three meals in it. You could do it differently, I guess. But uh, three meals, I pick the one I'm going to make. There's a recipe card with pictures in it. And then every ingredient you need, exactly the right amount to make that. Uh, if it's if it's a, you know, four scallions, it's four scallions. If You see the little bottles? It's a little bottle of sauce. So there's no wastage. You always have just what you need, no extra shopping involved. And you get to cook things you might never cook and become adept at it. And you use ingredients you may never have heard of. And now, next time you shop, you'll know. And it's for less than $10 a meal. The ingredients are all fresh, never frozen. Not even the meats or fish. They're all fresh because it's a refrigerated box. Everything can be prepared in 40 minutes or less. No more sad takeout. And, and, and the thing is, is that one of the things, I, I love Blue Apron. <laughs> so I love, love it. And, and uh, the, the best thing about it is, is it really makes it interactive. When, when we use Blue Apron, we're, you know, we're all kind of cooking together. You know, we're having a, you know, it's a great glass with of wine kids. And cooking. Yeah. Yeah. The kids can do some stuff. We can do some stuff. There's just the right amount of work still left to do so that you're doing something with it. You know, it's not like you're just opening it up and throwing no, it in the No, you're cooking you're it. You're actually preparing and it. It fills the, and you're the, the house with delicious smells. Oh, that's great. And, and, and the, the food is so good, you know, and it, it's um it, you know i'm always surprised that that could come in the mail it's it's amazing. fresh ingredients from local farms i mean in every one it's uh it's just fantastic i'm a huge fan i know you will be too so we've got it set up so you can get two free meals yes they have a family plan go to blueapron.com slash twit blueapron.com slash twit and uh, you can try it free right now two meals are waiting for you Meals like seared cod and udon noodles with cabbage and shiitake mushroom broth. Vegetable bibim, bibimbap. I don't know what that is. And kimchi with enoki mushrooms and roasted kohlrabi. That's, now, you may say, what? Uh, but I'm telling you. By the way, you can also get online and tell them. I don't want that. I do want that. I'm vegan. Whatever. They have plans for everybody. Cook with just amazing fresh ingredients to make an amazing meal for your family. It's, I think, one of the reasons I love to cook for my family is a way of sharing love. And Blue Apron makes it easy. Blue Apron, or if you're looking for a special someone in your life, it's a great date night. You will impress. Blueapron.com slash twit. Right? If you, date a lot of, if you date a lot of people, you can impress them every you night. You can impress you them know? all. And then get that Casper mattress in action, and you're, you're a mm. golden. <laughs> <laughs> my, your mattress is comfortable. You should see my pillow. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for a pick of the week. Let's start with the expensive guy, Alex, <laughs> Alex Lindsay. I am going kind of expensive. He brings his own lights. You know, you know. <laughs> the, um, so uh, uh, this is, uh, I don't know if any of you have seen it. So DJI, you know, DJI makes drones, right? Yep. And um, they have this really cool technology, these gimbal technologies. And they finally figured out how to take, you know, a lot of people don't want to fly the drone. It's, you know, they run into their neighbors and people get upset. So they put it on a handle. You can see this. So this is the drone oh, camera. This thing's amazing. Frederick yeah. Van Johnson brought it to the new screensavers. He introduced it to me. So oh, you know, and it's mm, so yeah. so you you unfold this little guy here, and and this comes out, and you put your iPhone in there as a viewer. Um, you know, so that's your little uh, iPhone grabber here, and then you just you just kind of unlock each one of these, and uh, you unlock this one here, and so now it's free. Now it looks kind of you know sad, but once you turn it on. <laughs> It uh it jumps right into place, you know. And now it's a gimbal. It's an automated it's a gim powered gimbal. Yeah, and so what? Basically, you know, you're getting, you know, uh, and, and you can, you know, with your little thumb, you can you can actually point it around, so it's, you can control it a little bit here, here and there, while you're walking around, and um, it's pretty great. It's like having a. You know, it's not the replacement for a steady cam for you know professional steady cam. My brother's a steady cam operator, um, but uh, but if you want something where you're going to get some great behind the scenes photos for your for your YouTube video or um, you know just some things where you're doing a company you know, you're going to walk through your company or the school and, and you want to have it like if you think about all those um, shake it up uh, 
videos with uh, for the Taylor Swift. You know, mm -hmm. they when all these schools were doing it. This is mm -hmm. like the perfect, <laughs> the perfect thing for that. And so, um, anyway, it's about six hundred bucks. I think. I think it's about in that. <laughs> In that, in that, so it's not it's not free. Uh, we have the larger version for our, our larger cameras called the Ronin, which is the kind of the big version of it, um, which is a little bit more expensive. And um, but this one, uh, it also fits in my backpack, so I've been carrying it around and shooting a little behind the scenes of stuff that we're shooting, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. So uh, anyway, it's called the Osmo, and it's O S M O, and uh, it's it's pretty cool. So I will, I guess, the best thing I can say is that I agree with Frederick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really, really cool. Nice. Um, how about you, uh, Renee Ritchie? What do you got for us? I've got uh, two small picks, but first I just wanted to mention that there's new betas out for all the stuff, uh, yep. iPhone, Apple TV, and the Apple TV one is really cool because it has dictation, and I'll use the finally word, so if you don't want to use that on-screen keyboard anymore, hopefully that will be a thing of the past soon. You can just talk to it, mm. type in like a person, mm. uh, which is super exciting. Mm. Uh, also, live photos, folders, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. So my picks, uh, the first one, I'm going to try to demo this. This is a tea infuser. Now, <laughs> I first saw this in my visit to Winnipeg, and I promptly used it by accident to fill a candle. So my, my first introduction to this was not very auspicious. But what it is, and I have to credit Ceterani Caldwell for getting me into loose tea because she kept putting such beautiful pictures up. It, it's a... It's not an AeroPress. People think it's an AeroPress, but basically you pour your tea into your loose tea, then you pour water on it. Then if you happen to have a handy dandy mug available, you just put this on top and you let go and the liquid drains out of the infuser and goes right into the cup. Hmm. And that makes it super convenient. And when you pull it off, there is no uh, spillage or anything else of that kind. So it makes it super easy to brew a beautiful cup of tea uh, at any time from really nice tea leaves that you happen to have around. I need to get one. Get me one of them. That's it's cool. Just, it's, it's just cool. It's geeky cool. And someone put it on the table in front of me uh, and they put what I thought was two teacups down and it turned out it was one teacup and like I said, the candle. Uh, so I, I put it on and I didn't pay attention and it was like there was tea everywhere, but also the candle went out. So long story short, I learned quickly how to be dexterous with these things. But now that I've got the hang of it, it is uh, it is just super awesome. And the other thing is, last week we mentioned the Music Memos article that Dave Wiskus uh, wrote uh, for iMore. Right. Uh, this week he put the album, um, I don't know how much, like he, he records a lot of stuff in voice memos, so this is probably before he got his hands on Music Memos, but his first EP with his band Airplane Mode uh, just went up for pre-release. So if you want to hear the kind of stuff that people using this technology produce, because his stuff is all produced I should say their stuff because there's Joe Chaplinsky and several other people in the band. It's all produced using Apple stuff. It's it's mixed in Apple technologies, recorded with 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 all these stuff. It's broken down in um, on the iPhone, uh, and it's just super cool because they get really really good results. And it's one of those examples of things that just would be super hard to do previous to the internet and technology age, just for an independent band to to put all this stuff together. So neat. If, yeah. If you want to hear the end result of what he was talking about, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Music Memo is so cool. We talked about it last week in uh, the new Garage yeah. Band. Did he use Garage Band or uh, what does he use? I, they use Garage Band or Logic. I'm not sure if they uh. use both or not. But it, it's an example that there's some apps that Apple really does a really good job on. And again, different teams are producing different results. Right. Andy Anaka, what do you got for us? Uh, mine is just simple storage. Uh, I usually travel, particularly since I uh, I switched to MacBooks that have built-in SSDs, uh, to I, I, uh, supplement that with an SSD and an external case. Uh, and this was the one that I used to travel with. Uh, but then I recently I replaced it with this, which is the Samsung Portable SSD T1 uh, for reasons that should be yeah. obvious because that's now, whereas this was big enough that, of course, it's not a big deal to carry it, but it takes up a big pocket in my laptop bag, whereas this, I may as well always have this with me because it's just that small and just that light. And it is also a USB 3.0 drive, uh, and it is also super fast, and it's also, unlike a, a thumb drive, fast enough that I can actually use it for like my Lightroom files and uh, my iMovie projects, which is what so I generally teensy. use these things for. Yeah, yeah exactly, and this is uh, 512, uh, 500 gigabytes, uh, not that expensive either. It's 100. The price just dropped to about 164 dollars. Uh, you can get them pretty much anywhere for 164. 156 on Amazon. Exactly, and mm -hmm. you can get the 250 gigabyte version for about half of that, mm -hmm. and they make them in sizes as big as a terabyte. Uh, I, I I think that for me, 512 is the right size because again, I like to be able to have 
whatever the huge pile of photos that I'm working on at any given moment, plus whatever huge video project I might be working on at any given moment, uh, I want to have that there, plus whatever uh, whatever high def. Uh, Blu-ray rips that I might want to load on and then take off of my uh, my uh, iPads. Uh, I, I don't have to. The great thing about having the extra storage is that I don't have to think about whether I want to take something with me or not. I'll just have it with me. Uh, the only caveat is that it has this really dumb thing where um, to uh, it's. I've got this formatted as a regular Mac OS volume, like most things that you buy uh, as a pre-made drive. It's formatted as uh, as FAT for uh, for Windows or Mac. Uh, so when you first plug it in, it will mount as a 128 megabyte flash <laughs> drive, which will make you disappointed and sad until you realize that there is a Mac app that you have to double click to install a special added driver uh. that does nothing but does nothing but add. Well, excuse me, does two things. It adds a smart, a, a smart ability to it. So if it's about to fail, uh, then it will do nothing to tell disk utility that it's about to fail, but you can still reassure yourself that it says smart status, everything's fine, it doesn't do anything. But it, will, it also has a driver for SSD, uh, a SCSI SSD or something like that, which will technically make it run faster under certain circumstances. Uh, I like the idea of not having to have a special driver installed for any reasons and also not have to worry about what is this driver going to be doing to future compatibility of other software I've got on this device. So you have to, it will not, it will not prepare it as a regular volume until you do that installation. But as soon as you do that, you can then click over into disk utility, reformat it as whatever you want. Oh. Uh, and then run a couple of pseudo commands to remove whatever drivers and it will uh, it will mount just fine oh that's interesting okay yeah. but like i said i like oh, it has that really cool like it'll identify this as a 2013 to 2015 things has that it's like the size of a matchbox sort of I thing mean, it's so yeah, exactly small. i mean you, you may as well have it you may as well have it with you uh it's uh, i'm uh, preparing a talk that i'm going to be giving at the yosemite conference uh, next month uh and always 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 i'll have the i'll have my talk all finished like a week beforehand but then the night before i'll be thinking you know what should go there remember when i was in the boss in boston common and i saw that duck that was tapping at an at a piece of wire that would be perfect here and because i travel with a <laughs> my last two months worth of photos with me i can now insert at 4 a.m <laughs> three hours before i'm supposed to give my presentation <laughs> the picture of the duck uh, standing on top of a wire does anybody uh, make a so it uses that funny usb uh three connector on, on it not a standard yeah. it's that weird one with a little dimple in it does anybody make yeah. that to type c because that would be so great for a macbook that would that would be super cool but i haven't seen it yet this would this this model just came out last year, uh, so it's still fairly fresh. Um, I mean, and it's not as though it comes with this, and uh, it's not as though this is all that inconvenient to carry. But, yeah, if you don't have the right cable with you, you're pretty much hosed. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, that so, that, yeah. that goes into a standard USB port, so it would work on a – you could get it and put an adapter Take on it. Take a C to USB. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It'll, it'll, it'll work with anything. And uh, Does it come with a cable? Uh, it comes It comes with a cable, right? You're all, right. You're all set to go. Nice little short uh, one, which seen, I like. I, I, I'm glad to see that uh, Anantex benchmarks uh, seem to be spot on. I did some tests with it today. Uh, and in many cases, it's actually faster than my Thunderbolt drives. Wow. Uh, it's the only, it's faster at reading than it is at writing. Uh, but even like when you're using it as, uh, again, if you've got your Lightroom, uh, Lightroom, excuse me, Lightroom library on it, uh, it's still uh, plenty fast, a lot faster than the, you know, one terabyte pocket drive, uh, spinning pocket drive that you might have uh, put inside here. Like I said, it's what, what I like. What I like the most about these drives is I'm already get. I already get the benefit of being able to like walk around and like not have to wait for the drive to spin down if I just want to move from the living room back to the bedroom. With this hanging off the side uh, of uh, of my MacBook, it's like I don't even have to. I don't have to wait for that to park as well. Nice. The, the number of times I've had yeah. like a, I've had a spinning drive attached to that and forgotten that I'm not allowed to simply grab the laptop and like walk downstairs to get to sign for the UPS guy as an okay I might have just lost 500 gigabytes worth of stuff easy come easy go I feel I dumb I didn't know this actually I think I knew it and forgot it because <laughs> the Sam we had a Samsung phone that had that weird type C connector you mm -hmm. know the one with the dimple and uh, John Slanina just pointed out you know a micro USB will go in the little part of the left part yep. of that <laughs> So you wouldn't get USB three speeds, I presume. This is right. to step down to USB it'll, two. It'll work, but you, you you want all the advantages of having a super high speed drive. Yeah, but you, so, yeah, but you're, if you're, you didn't you're not, happen you're to have totally a cable screwed. around, right? 
Uh, you'll, you'll, you'll get power. Uh, you'll get power. You'll get speed. You'll just get USB. Oh, speed. Oh, that's right. This is bus powered, and it's a bus powered terabyte. If you go, if you go for the most expensive, that's nice. Yeah, a bus powered terabyte. Love it. Yeah, the uh, you know some some of our guys will um, velcro those little drives to the to the back of the computer. You know, to your <laughs> yeah. They have velcro. <laughs> yeah. They have velcro on the bottom of the drive and velcro on the on the on the on the back here. And they'll just you know when they're working, they just pull it up and and you know on the road and they just stick it to it. Um, to uh, you know, just to keep keep it, in, so it's not hanging out. You know, but uh, but this is so awesome SSD, for a Mac. Once you get used to SSD, it's over. And what I mean, how awesome for a MacBook? I mean, it's so little, yeah. particularly a MacBook Air. Yeah, you're there. And if yeah. you're if you're doing if you're doing editing, right. it's great to have your whole library. You know, you can yeah. have a drive that just is named. You know that you know that that that's your Final Cut or whatever your your um uh you know your library there with all your events and everything else and it's super fast you're not giving anything up it's you know the ssds are amazing the reason you need a special driver for it i'm reading is that it's it's an encrypted drive it's aes-256 encryption yeah, well you can if you decide to use that you can decide not to use that but that's what the driver is for if you didn't use that you'd then then you, uh, then you don't well, need also, a driver i think it'll well yeah it'll, again it also gives you smart support uh and i was reading up on the standard because it wasn't the sort of thing that i just remember about right. and so there are some under certain circumstances, I believe there are some performance enhancements, but it's not a generalized. It's not that it makes everything faster all the time. It's like at certain right. points of view, because Mac OS does not have a driver for this new standard, then uh, it can't take advantage of it. Right. But as I said, I'd, I'd much rather I'd much rather make sure that uh, not not have to even think or worry about being able to move this from one computer to another. But mostly I don't like having any texts or any uh, system extensions on my yes, MacBook that I don't you. absolutely need. Yeah. It, ha it has to be an absolutely killer feature for me to put any sort of a system extension on this machine. Yeah. Boy, the size is amazing. I know. It's, it's, I actually, I, I'm sorry. To, I'm, I w I'd like to say that, well, Samsung has let me play with a prototype three months before it was introduced. Actually, a neighbor of mine uh, could not get hers started. <laughs> and so she had me come over to see if I could fix it because she assumed that it would be just like any other drive. She plugs it in and it'll, why is it only 128 28 megabytes? It's supposed to be like a whole 256 went, gigabytes. Oh my and, uh, God, woman, what is that? And uh, then, I, then I said, oh, actually, this is pretty cool. When yeah. you made that? Wow, that's nice. So Can I, I make you a uh, blue apron? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I get. See, I, I, I'm I'm on a I'm on a very good barter system with my neighbors. That like, oh, and I'll, I'll I'll fix something or I'll give them some advice on something, and then they will say, oh, by the way, we made way too much uh, made too much much lasagna last night. Would you like to take about three that's, pounds of it home for you? That's what you want. Who are the sisters well, that lived upstairs from the odd couple? I'm just glad I'm just glad that I'm contributing to the neighborhood as the I'm glad to have to have been uh, placed in the crackpot inventor role and not here's this creepy guy at the no, top no, of the it's street. Perfect. He does he doesn't leave the he doesn't leave the house a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> he just got a bicycle, but he seems to have trouble holding it up. <clears throat> no, that's nice. Nothing like leftover lasagna. Yes. Made with love. <laughs> Andy and Akos at the Chicago Sun Times. That's where you'll find his scribbling, but you'll also find his uh, blog at cwob.com. And of course, he joins us each and every week. He does uh, Anako's Almanac on 5x5. Five five. And you're elsewhere as well, right? You do other shows. What else do you do? Yeah, I do a bunch of others. Uh, I also do a weekly show about Google uh, for Relay.fm called it. Material I was uh, with uh, Yasmin Evgen and Russell Ivanovic, who uh, the creator of Pocket Cast, by the way. So uh, oh. we're doing a show tonight. <laughs> I, was just, I, was just awesome. do, I was just doing the show notes. I had to add stuff about Apple and had to add stuff about uh, it's, it's a it, we're having a lot of fun. with it. Tell them I love Pocket Cast. We recommend it all the time, both iOS and Android. Yeah, but it's, it became <clears throat> uh, it, it's, it's definitely my standard across all platforms. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also uh, love Mr. Uh, Alex Lindsay. It was so nice to have you in studio today, uh, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> this works great. I, I, I think we'll just move to... Uh, never... Uh, hand hand, hand you know. that, that, that camera. I bet, I bet Leo would love to see that new camera. Why don't you hand it <laughs> over to him? Just hand it over. Uh, yeah, just give it to me there. Uh, yeah. He's yeah, even got the leather chair. It's perfect. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it's very... Just, 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 here, 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 Leo. Just, just. just oh, yeah, I'll take it. That's good. Uh, thank you. If we, had, if, we had, if we had planned this out, this would have been we amazing. We could have done a really <laughs> cool thing. Uh, Pixelcore.com. But best thing to do, follow them on Twitter. Uh, the Final Cut user group, is that soon? 
Yes. Uh, I just tweeted it out on my Twitter account, and uh, we're going to be using our little question engine, and we start in about 45 minutes. Awesome. So we'll be live at 2, and so if you want to check that out, um, you know, if you have questions about Final Cut or you just want to see us uh, go along, uh, it's, it's a great group of guys that are much smarter than I am when it comes to Final Cut. It's like the world experts. So uh, come check it out. Alex, L-I-N-D-S-A-Y on Twitter. And oh, by the way, and also check out the Metallica show. It was quite nice. Did, uh, oh, it was. The stream was excellent. Yes. Yes, it was. The they stream must have had some really good people behind the scenes. It would have been, uh, it would have taken a lot to, to stream a great stream like that uh, to YouTube. And um, you probably would have hired a very good streaming company. Must have manage really know what they were doing. Is that still up yes. on YouTube? Could you watch it? It is. It is. I don't know how long they're going to keep it up there. So um, you should definitely, if you're interested in seeing a great uh, rock show, uh, definitely check it out. Um, you know, so it's, uh, it's, it's great. I mean, the band was on fire the so, night uh, before yeah. super bowl yeah did you get to did you get to talk to the guys no no, no i didn't I, but i did i do have i did i did i did walk out on the stage with the theta so it was so i, <gasps> I want to see the theta yeah 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 it was so but it was um uh yeah pretty amazing uh pretty amazing show now uh did you uh you did this the stream not the camera they probably had yeah, uh, uh, no, the, cam that, the camera work is they they have their own crew for that and and, and they uh it's an amazing crew um uh, Marcia, who's the who's the TD for this, is just she's been working with them for a long time. That makes and, sense. Uh, when so but when really bands tour, it. they actually typically. In fact, we we I knew some of the people who would go around with the Rolling Stones. They used to work at uh, Tech TV. They typically yeah. bring their own crew, a director, camera guys, everybody because they, they need know the to show. know the show, right? Yeah, and she knows she knows when she's going to be going to those things, and she's worked with them for a long time. And she's in any music event, we try to get her on because you know she just really gets music, you know, and uh, and so, but it's uh, you know, and she's calling, you know, she's telling all these camera operators what she wants, and you know, all those zooms and turns and everything else. She's you know, it's it's actually really fun. I tried to persuade her to let us record her calling the show, and she wasn't interested. But it was it's it's. Really that I'd love to, to see. A show like this. Yeah, Get directors off. often don't want uh, any yeah. uh, <laughs> any recordings said, in the booth because could, they can get a little testy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, but 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 it's uh, it's very uh, it's it's quite a thing to listen to. So, um, but anyway, it's it, it's a great show. It's up there. I don't know how long it's going to be up there. So, people ought to if you want to check it out, check it out. Wow. Yeah. You, you whoever did that streaming did an excellent job. It was uh, flawless. <laughs> And I know there were a lot of people watching because uh, to get to see a live Metallica concert free, free. is pretty yeah. sweet. Yeah, it's cool. By the way, they're also on Billions. They're on this week's uh, episode of Billions. He nice. flies his private jet <laughs> to Quebec City. He oh, says, Metallica is only going to perform one North American concert. It's tonight in Quebec, and we're going. And he should, uh, done, he, should, he should have said tonight in San Francisco. I know. And then, uh, and then I'm watching, and all of a sudden there's James, and he's talking to him. And then the whole band starts playing. It's pretty odd. Like backstage is pretty cool. Yeah. Wow, look at this. Man, was that a show. They, give, they do a great show. Yeah, really, uh, really great. I, I, the stream. Yeah, and the stream. The screen, and the screen behind them is amazing. Is it? It is, it is like 50 feet higher yeah. or more. And in this big LED, and when you get these wide shots, it's just unbelievable what they have going on in those. In That's the, the new thing. Every, I mean, the screens have transformed uh, live concerts because yeah. you don't need a big only, set. You can make it look like anything. Yeah, it, it would it would compress a little bit better if they didn't have them right behind them. You right. know, you'll see that things break up a little bit because right. the one sure thing you that, the video... Them. Let's not have static doesn't compress well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, so that's the that that's hard. But, but they, I mean, the, for the for the crowd, it's just a, an amazing experience. Yeah. And it was quite a thing. And they had fireworks and ball, they had these big footballs. <laughs> People were bouncing around at the end. It was <laughs> nice. It was good. Very nice. Renee Ritchie's at imore.com, near to Quebec City. Yeah, Montreal, a few hours south. <laughs> uh, and uh, he joins us every week, uh, and it's always uh, great to have you know all three of you. Uh, what it just makes this show so. Thank you. It's my it's a real privilege for me to sit here and listen to uh, to the real Mac experts, the real Apple experts. Uh, every we do it every Tuesday, eleven a.m. Pacific, two p.m. Eastern time. Twenty one hundred. I'm sorry, nineteen hundred UTC. Uh, live. Twit. TV or twit. TV slash live. Both will work. Different, we use different players on different pages that way because uh, some of our Sublime player, which is on our main site, is blocked apparently by a lot of government and military <laughs> installations. So if you can't get through on the live dot, on twit.tv slash live, try live.twit.tv. 
Uh, but if and if you uh, can't watch live, of course you can always watch after the fact because we make on-demand audio and video available uh, at twit.tv/mbw for MacBreak Weekly, but also wherever you subscribe to Pocket Cast would be a good choice or one of the Twit apps on every platform. Thanks for being here. Back to work though, because you know what? Break time is over.